Team Awesome! Score one for Team Awesome! Team Awesome, remember? Team Awesome is back! Welcome back to a special post-series episode of Tangle Talk. Today we're going to kind of just review the series and the fandom and our experiences running this podcast. It's going to be very casual, very conversational, and hopefully very silly. Warning though, we are likely to get negative at times because we are deliberately going to discuss things that we don't like. We're also going to sing praises, but we're going to air our grievances. But before we get into any of that, we're going to start with Shorty's theme song, Takeover. <laughs> Disney, what Try the hell is that? Like... Okay, so not only was I not expecting that at all, like, I both love it and hate it. I'm like, that's how you're going to end the series? You're going to leave us off with that? No, like, the animation was stunning. <laughs> the animation was beautiful, and it was funny, and at the same time, I'm like, really? Really? That's <laughs> what you're going to do? We could have been having shorts, but no, you're going to give us this instead? <laughs> so, yeah... I don't get to learn Eugene's mom's name, but I have to hear Shorty sing the theme song twice. Yep. Right? Because right. he's already sang it in an episode? Exactly. Priorities. Exactly. I mean, I know that people, like, on Twitter were voting for who do you think, who else do you think should, like, sing the theme song? I'm like, first of all, guys, if you've seen any of the other theme song takeovers, it's always funny. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's have Varian or Cassandra do it. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, that's Jeremy Jordan and Eden Espinosa, you know? Like, I mean, comically speaking, I can see why they'd pick Shorty. Mm -hmm. I also would have, would have accepted Stan and Pete, though. Oh, my I mean, gosh. Oh, that would have been so perfect. Amazing! <laughs> that would have been, like, out of left field, but they both can sing, like, like, the actors can both sing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, just... I've seen, I heard them both do it, so I know that they can. So, like, that would have been, like, great to just have a Stan and Pete theme song takeover instead of Shorty. I mean, part of my thing is that, like, you know how I'm like, no, nah, I mean, it takes a bit for Shorty to make me laugh. I don't love Shorty. He's very pointless, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, it. I was glad for the surprise, considering we were already like, okay... Two weeks in, three weeks in, we're going into quarantine, and we've got no new Tango content forever again until you hand us this thing that we're really not expecting. <laughs> With gorgeous, gorgeous animation! Like, yeah. oh my god! Rapunzel's animation was so dang good! I'm like, what? I missed her what? so much. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So sad. <sighs> okay. Yep. Anyway, so now on to our series in review. Now, when I say series in review, I don't mean that we're going to go over every single episode and stuff like that. We're just going to talk about, like, our favorite things and our least favorite things and talk about the podcast in general and all that kind of fun I mean, crap. We already did go over every episode. You yeah. can listen you to can listen all to 50 episodes you where we go over them. the rest of the series. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You want to know what we thought about the episodes individually? Listen to the rest of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just going to talk about... You if know, you haven't already, I know some of you have binged it, and I love you dearly. <laughs> I know. People, like, oh, with just, us from the beginning, and I also love you dearly. See, I, the people who are like, okay, I only just discovered, the, discovered that your podcast existed, and I've started binging it from the beginning. I'm like, oh my god, what? I know, right? <laughs> you started from the beginning? That's amazing. You can listen to like, me I, that long? Wow. <laughs> I know. I can't listen to me that long. How can you listen to me that long? So... We're going to start this with our favorite major character. As if anyone needs to ask the three of us who our favorite, <laughs> mutual favorite character is. It's Have Shorty. <laughs> His writing, <laughs> superb. Any podcast after this one and the next one. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, what is his name? Brock Thunderstrike? Is yep. that it? I don't I didn't pay attention because I hate him. So. <laughs> yeah, okay, least favorite, but now, but like major characters. So, you know, like Rapunzel, Eugene, Cass, Varian, I guess. Because there's a major, major character. Lance Counts is a major character. Mm -hmm. um, so Eugene is absolutely my favorite. And he's very quickly followed by Rapunzel. But uh, we'll get to Lance later because of how much <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Um, but least our least favorite major characters, though. Um, mm. Okay, so since I just, like, listed who counts as the major characters, it's gotta be Cass. It just does. Like... Just, I think mine would uh, be, like, season three Cass. Yeah, see, yeah. okay. Season three Cass, that's fair. I yeah. mean, like, 
let's go back and I've rewatched the series and not only like knowing where it's going, but like I've always had kind of a love hate relationship with Cass. Like mm-hmm. she had to throw on me, and then I was like, dude, why are you being so bitchy? And then <laughs> like season three showed up, and I'm like, okay, bye bye, gar- dumpster fire. <laughs> I don't care how bad you are, you may leave. Um, favorite recurring character. So a recurring character is someone who shows up frequently, but is also absent from several episodes or only plays minor parts in the episodes that they're in. Edmund. This, I think, actually. <laughs> Ed- God. It, yeah, Eddie. absolutely. Oh <laughs> my God. If we're counting Lance as a major character, then Edmund is my favorite yeah. recurring character. Yeah. Like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We, uh, uh, or, or maybe uh, Monkey Demanitus. Uh, he was yeah. really good too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Vigor, yeah. Monkey the Manatus would be a one shot. I oh, mean, because okay. he's only a monkey as the Manatus in one episode. That's true. Well, but he like, was fantastic. <laughs> he was. But, like, but yeah, so it's like, I mean, yeah, Edmund, I think the best part about Edmund is that I wasn't expecting him to be as delightful as he was. Because, mm-hmm. because I mean, our very first introduction in, to him is like, Bear Hood guy. Tried to murder his own son. <laughs> murder his own son. Oh, I love him so dearly. <laughs> I just had a flashback to Ellie predicting to uh, to Ellie specifically, but us agreeing with her predicting that when Eugene's on the floor, there's that shadow over him, yep. and we're like, "Oh, the oh. bear hood. That's the Edmund." We're just like, I was just like, "Well, he's got a there's like a bear shadow over him." So. And we see the guy in the bear hood. That must be his dad. That must be Edmund. There he is. It's, it, this is when the reveal happens. I wasn't right, of course, about that's exactly when the reveal happens. But it happens seconds it later. like, how the hell did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I am the dark prophet. Yep. Okay? Okay. <laughs> you are. That is your title. Dark <laughs> prophet Ellie. Oh. Edmund. He's the best. So I watched least favorite Pink recurring Day and character. It made my heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, least favorite recurring character. Um, who shows up like multiple times? Who I don't. Fred. Yeah, Fred. <laughs> yeah. Fred. Fred. I mean, even even though season three kind of redeemed him a little, it didn't redeem him enough to make me like love the dude. Yeah. And I was like, no, Fred. Okay. Or Stallion. Mine's either Fred or Calliope. Yeah, or Calliope. See, the funny thing is that. Calliope is so annoying, but at this level where I actually kind of like her for it. Like, Calliope is my... Sh- it's like, other people like, I hate her, I can't stand her, and I'm like, I kind of like her, actually. Then other people <laughs> like, oh, I love Shorty, and I'm like, why? Why do you love Shorty? <laughs> More for you. You can have her. You can... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. can't stand her. <laughs> also, her character is just adorable. Yeah. Like, seriously. She's really cute. I think her voice actress uh, is in, well, maybe not, but there's someone in a comer- a progressive commercial that sounds just like her. And oh, I don't know if it's uh, the same person or not. Her, but I know who you're talking Light? about, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the oh. hell? <laughs> yeah, honestly, the first time I heard her talk, I thought that she was like Peridot from Steven Universe's voice actress. I was like, really? <laughs> and then, but she's not. So it's like, that's just a, a, you know, annoying voice thing that they do. Um like that nasally, they're like, I know how to make a character noisy. I'll make her nasally. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. So our favorite minor characters, minor characters being someone who only shows up once or barely has any speaking parts in the episode that they're in, that would be Monkey Demanitus. Because mm-hmm. like, talk about a character who I was not expecting to love. Mm-hmm. Especially like later on when you see like human Demanitus stuff, it's like, you know what? I think that you are not nearly as like nice as you come across mm-hmm. like there's more to demanitus than meets the eye but monkey demanitus is exactly what we got and i love monkey demanitus with my entire being so yeah i can't think of anybody think else yeah i know uh, i'm like matthews oh no matthews only shows or he shows up multiple times so never yeah. mind yeah so I, mean, I do like, love him dearly matthews does have like, a little story arc all his own you know and he right, talks a lot right. in his Episodes yeah, and stuff like that. So. And we got she loves me bingo. So you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, maybe Aunt Willow is. I do like Aunt yeah. Willow. She, she was so fun. up one episode, and I thought she was fun. As long as we're talking about you know she loves me bingo, absolutely Aunt Willow. Yeah. Um. Also, one of the things I love about Willow is that she because of her we got some personality in Ariana. Mm-hmm. Like. 
That was the first real Ariana personality that we got was Way of the Willow. So it's like, oh, yeah. she does have a personality under there. How lovely. Yeah. Thank you for um, showing please. us. <laughs> Kelsey, you were right. She is in that progressive commercial. Is she really? <laughs> I, it. It is. Yeah. I went to oh, her Wikipedia page and it says she plays the character Mara in TV commercials for progressive. And here's, yeah. here's what happened is that we were laying in bed and I was crying because hormones. I don't even remember what I was crying about. But the commercial was on and I was like... Is that Calliope? <laughs> like, through my tears? <laughs> she's also in a Travelocity commercial. She's, you know, one of those, you know, oh Captain God. Obvious is talking to her. But, nice. she's not using, but she's not using quite the nasaliness. And I know exactly which commercial you're talking about because there's a very recently aired commercial where it's like she's deliberately being more annoying mm -hmm. than usual. So she's deliberately talking in this whiny, nasally voice and droning on and on and on. And no, yeah, okay. Good I was, job, I was like, good job. I know that voice. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the regular so high schedule. Least favorite minor character, I thought about this a lot, and it's probably like mother and father. Yeah. Like Brock. <laughs> I hate him yeah. with my entire being. <laughs> okay. I, really I was so mad. I need to watch the series again because all I can think of is like season three. <laughs> Okay, so um, our favorite villain pretended to be uh, uh, Kira's oh, parents. Hello, they suck. Mm -hmm. yep. See, they suck, but I kind of like them as characters. I don't like Freebird at all, so I really don't like Mother and Father. <laughs> Even though, like, the one thing Mother and Father do bring to the table is that that whole situation was very randomly, like, fae-ish, and I love the fae, so I'm like, I'm sad that that was never really addressed again, mm -hmm. but, like... Yeah. But other than that, I'm like, what are you doing here? Go away. <laughs> Why? How dare you have Kathy and Jamie in an episode and she doesn't sing? Like, how dare you have Kathy and Jamie in an episode where there's a song and she doesn't sing? <laughs> God. Uh, so favorite villain, uh, Matthews. Absolutely. Hands down, Matthews yeah. was my favorite villain in this entire series. I wish it would have been Zontiri, like, but I just feel a little underwhelmed with what yeah, Zontiri ended up being. Not, but maybe that's because we, like, jacked him up really hard in, like, season two. Yeah, it helped <laughs> that they did. Like, well, yeah. They, yeah. they made Zontiri seem like there was going to be this humongous deal and, like, all the angles and the pecs and, the, like, abs and the, like... We got tiny squid legs. And then there was going to be tiny squid legs, yeah. Bang. <sighs> yep. Dude, yeah. yeah. So, like, I wanted... I was. It was Zontiri for, like, quite a while like it was on Terry during season two i was all mm -hmm. hyped for yeah. on Terry. and oh, then like yeah. and like then Terry... she showed up and we were like oh okay oh. Well, anyway matthews is the best <laughs> yes he is the best matthews is amazing i love matthews i mean and then matthews gave us like evil eugene twice mm -hmm. um oh, thank you god <laughs> Um, least favorite villain. I'm just gonna have to go with Gothel. No, yeah. Cassandra is my least favorite villain. You yeah. know what? Because you know what? If season three Cass is my least favorite major character, then Cassandra is my least favorite villain. Yeah. Just yeah. like straight up, hands down. Oh, none yeah. of her. Yeah, her motives. I mean, we've already talked about this, but her motives don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. The whole Gothel thing doesn't make any sense. Oh, I hate it. I we hate, hate it. it with all our heart and souls. I hate, it. I hate it. I mean, it's not okay. It's not like her motives don't make sense, but it's like she's relying too heavily on the Gothel angle and not enough yeah. on the other stuff, yeah. which was present and built up through the series. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. kind of like mostly thrown out the window for Gothel. And it's just yeah. like, what? So yeah. So weak ass villain. Yep. The end. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Favorite season, season two. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't know. Because I like season two, but I also like season three. Minus the crappy parts of it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Parts are like the whole season. I know. <laughs> See, that's, that's why I have to say season two, because it's exactly. like, I, I really only disliked a couple episodes yeah. in season two. Yeah. Majority of season three, I didn't like. And season one's, meh, it's okay. It's got a good episode. It's got a bad episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm with you on that. I think that uh, season two had the strongest story. Season one was all, you know, character set up, which I understand, yeah. and I'm fine with that. Um, and season three was like falling apart. It was just like, oh my gosh, what the act? I mean, and it had a lot of really fun stuff happening in it. Like, oh, absolutely. The Lost Treasure of Hertz Jassan was like, what the hell is this? I love it. Why is <laughs> Running Wiley Wiley Coyote? This is amazing. So, like, I really love that. And then, like, the first half of season three was great. I yeah. loved it. I loved it. And then mm-hmm. the second half rolled around, and I was like, why? Yeah, it was just... funny because I feel like they aired all the good episodes, and then Cassandra's Revenge, which was, it was great. I mean, it you know, Cassandra's Revenge had definitely had some very high points, mm-hmm. very yeah. high points in Cassandra's Revenge. And then, and then, it just fell downhill. After that, it was like we should have stopped at Cassandra's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> should have like, okay, just, just been the end. end. Yeah, like, <laughs> people say like it's it's all gonna snowball from here. I'm like snowball or just sort of like painfully roll down a hill yeah because like that was a painful roll down that hill that was like ugh. okay so please favorite season was season three definitely yeah 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 um but now we're gonna get a little bit more precise we're gonna talk about our our three top three favorite and bottom least favorite episodes of each season so, I mean, there's no way that I could pick a single episode I love the most and no way. Oh, I definitely have a, an episode I love the least. This was but... like the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. I was looking through the titles and I was like, I don't know. You should have asked me, you dork face. I'm yeah. I have a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. <laughs> I was like, I, I have can't. a spreadsheet for everything, Kelsey. I think I have an honorable mention in every category. <laughs> oh, nice. I couldn't pick three. <laughs> I started doing honorable mentions in season three, but like I do technically have them for like the other seasons, but it's like, I do have like strong, like stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, season one, my favorites were big brothers of Corona, the quest for Varian and the return of strongbow. Uh, my top three for season one are big brothers of Corona return of strongbow. And then Fitzherbert PI. Oh God. I forgot about that that one. Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) Mine were Return of Strongbow, <laughs> Big Brothers, and Not in the Mood, because I think it's freaking no, hilarious. Kelsey, because it's my crack episode and I love it. But I'm gonna give <laughs> I'm gonna give Secret of the Sun Drop an honorable mention because it was good and my tattoo's based on Set Yourself Free, so like it has to be in there. But I just mm, I love I love Not in the Mood. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> no, I do love how all three of us are like, well, Big Brothers are Corona and Return of Strongbow, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I think with me, uh, what made Quest for, Quest for Varian stand out with the other stuff was um, I remember watching it and feeling like it was a lot longer than it was. Not in a bad way, just like I was so engrossed in the mm-hmm. episode um, because you had, you know, her whole opening bit with the premonition and then you had like the whole travel out to old Corona and finding out, you know, that that she, her finding out that her dad had been lying to her this whole time, her finding out that like the captain of the guard had orders to like, do she, did she had no idea what to vary in the whole like scene with the invariant lab. First of all, starting with throwing chemicals at each other's faces and like turning each other's hair colors. But then when captain attacks them and Eugene, you know, like, first of all, he does the whole protective stand in front of Rapunzel thing. And then he like, you know, oh, you just messed with the wrong girl and rolls up his sleeves to, like, you know, defend yeah. Cassandra. Yeah. So the fight in, in the lab was fantastic. And then, like, Max got his fantastic moment um, with, you know, beating up the, the all of the attacking guards. And then you had, you know, this was well before we were really tired of movie callbacks. So you had, like, <laughs> movie callbacks in this episode. Um, you got the whole thing with uh, Eugene giving the guided tour um, to Max about, oh, well, oh here's, God. here's the wardrobe that she hid me in, and here's where she hid me on <laughs> in the frying pan, and here's where I died, and here's, I, mean, I, love, was, like, I love that he's like, and here, ladies and gentlemen, is where I got stabbed to death, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and bled out love- on the floor, and I'm like, I love <laughs> you! I still love how Ricky was like, he said he wrote the line that got cut, where he's like, oh, be care- careful if you see some blood there, I'm a bleeder. <laughs> 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 Rapunzel's moment of letting down my hair. Oh, which is like, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. You She's have... Like, I'm ready for fight! You <laughs> have the whole bit where it's like, she's 
she jumps off the roof and everybody's joins hands and they're all like falling down but her hair saves them all and then when her hair opens up Cass is like is that new and I'm like oh my god Eugene knew about her hair this whole time and Cassandra didn't so that was like thrilling as a new dream person mm -hmm. um and then the tower falls down which was so emotionally impactful and it was just like oh I just I loved that episode there was just so much about it that I really really loved so I realized yeah. somebody reblogged them selling the tower merchandise at the wedding and I'm like now that is extra stupid because <laughs> totally <laughs> it exists anymore <laughs> it was already stupid before because it's like yeah at Rapunzel's wedding we should sell oh, her prison, prison as knickknack <laughs> but now it's like sell her completely uh, destroyed yeah prison okay yeah. What? Is it because that's where they met? Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> I guess well, I guess that's supposed to be what it is, because it's where yeah. they met. Yeah. Sorry, little boy, you should be selling figures of them on the boat with, like, little right. legs hanging around it. Oh, my God. That's what you should be selling, little boy. <laughs> but uh, I still, I love that you're all in agreement about Big Brothers of Corona and, and Return of Strongbow. Because, <laughs> like, you're the damn. I mean... Honestly, though, with, like, Return of Strongbow, I was thinking about the other day, and I was remembering the whole silhouette scene. The entire mm -hmm. silhouette scene is, like, so good. It's mm -hmm. so well done. And the, the funniest part is that, like, I remember trying to gif that scene, and I could gif almost the entire thing in one gif, except it's too long for Tumblr. Like, it's still the, the right, like, size, mm -hmm. but mm. it lasts too long for Tumblr to accept it. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh, that's that's amazing that the whole thing will fit in like one game it's so great <laughs> but oh god that was so clever just that whole way they did that was so great and Percival never showed up again yep. oh yeah you no. know what we saw the Baron this was the Baron's house but we never saw Percival again I kind of really <laughs> yeah. expected we were going to and like, the Baron killed him <laughs> oh, probably oh, you let man. Guys... well think about it you let those guys get away with like a bunch yep. of stuff out of my vault you're dead Bye. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and he also probably stomped on that suit of armor that they tackled. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, and then, God, I just, I love that episode. And I still, every single time I watch the bit where Cass is coming for them in the hallway and Eugene, like, is freaking out and he goes to turn and run and, like, runs into the frying pan. Like, I can feel his anxiety winding up and he's <laughs> yes. like to get away it's like oh this is so amazing i just love that yeah. she knew it was him from the indent he left in the paint <laughs> like, so funny yeah. <laughs> oh goodness it's so good it's yeah so good and i also love that like this is the only episode that mentions lance's real name and then you just kind of have to remember that for the very end <laughs> you know <laughs> Arnwaldo. <laughs> Making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then also, Jean gives Rapunzel that ring. Mm -hmm. oh. The one he <laughs> so, so cute. Sweet. So good. And then Big Brothers of Corona was, of course, like, ugh, God, that's so good. It's yeah. like Eugene's a dad, the first episode. And then, yep. ugh. And, of course, it introduces us to Kier and Catalina, who, mm -hmm. like, become major players. Who, Yay. like totally get honorable mention as like favorite major characters mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i did not expect like i always i thought that they were gonna get like one episode per season and then they like turned out to be like major characters in the third season so that was mm -hmm. great you know one of the better things about season three mm -hmm. yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> i just wanted to talk about Fitzherbert pi because i thought it was great because it was our first like Eugene centric episode, and mm -hmm. I was like, All right, I am ready for this. This is what I've been waiting for. It was like, my favorite episode got... until the return of Strongo came on, yeah. came around. I mean, we got we got so many great things. Um, you know, we had been drawing fan art of Eugene in a guard uniform for literal years, and then they're like, Here you go. And I was like, Well, thank you. I yes. appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just we got, we okay, got okay, Ellie. We got the one arm push up with the wink that we screamed mm, yeah. about at the panel. So yeah. like <laughs> it is uh oh we got him speaking Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I just I I thought that was such a great episode because it really highlighted Eugene's strengths and I felt like we really got to see him and 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just it makes also, my heart. Also, found that he's a cobbler. Oh, also yeah. found that the dude's a cobbler. Like he never does anything with it. But, like he can do it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. We got the whole phrase "bramium" out of that one. Oh so, yeah, math. Um, <laughs> I still quote bramium. that to yeah. this day. I math. Say that all the time playing D and D. Like after, because my character does a lot of damage, so I have uh-huh. to do a lot. Of Math, and at the end, I'm like, all right, Math. and I've done 48 points of slashing damage. Math. <laughs> Math. <laughs> oh, I mean, and this is one of the episodes where it's like, I recently have been talking about, somebody asked me things that I wish that people would acknowledge about the characters. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I said that people I wish would acknowledge about Eugene is that he's not a moron. And this is actually an episode that proves that he's not a moron. It's just he's, he thinks lazily and he doesn't make an effort, but the instant he makes an effort, he's on the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, he figured out about that painting, like, immediately, you know? I also realized uh, I saw on my on my Tumblr dashboard that somebody posted that he, was do- he did one-armed push-ups and you pointed out that he could do uh-huh. them with both arms. And I'm like, hmm. Yep. Who would win in a one-arm uh, push-up contest, Eugene or Edmund? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my He's God! He's been training that one arm for twenty-six years, Sunny Boy. <laughs> and he's also already way stronger than Eugene. Yeah, he uh, yes. Edmund would win. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edmund, I mean, with how easily he yeets the Stabbingtons. Right. So yeah. Like, he yeah. Throw you into the stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the man can bear hug with one arm. It's amazing. Yep. Uh, Kelsey, did you want to talk about I mean, on the moon? <laughs> I know it's a very uh, heated argument when it comes to, <laughs> to this one, but I've, I've always just been a fan of, like, the crackiest crack things. So this was literally, yeah. like, a crack fan fiction. <laughs> and <laughs> it makes exactly me laugh crazy. every single time yeah. I watch it. <laughs> it is yeah. definitely crack fan fiction and I will agree with that and I will say that if I were to read it as a fanfic I would probably like it more than watching it as an episode <laughs> it's like yes, reading it yeah, as a fanfic. seeing Eugene be anxious made me so uncomfortable <laughs> I was like no you can't be like that you can't be like me <laughs> stop it it's just so like out of character it's, it's funny yeah. I think it's freaking hilarious because you think of things that like we never thought that we would get. And I'm like, oh, I get to see this one thing that I never thought I would get to see. So I like that right. kind of stuff. I think it's hilarious. Fair enough. Rapunzel with her bangs in her face. <laughs> Moody teenager. I love it. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So going on to season two. So my three top three favorites are Lost and Found, Rapunzeltopia, and Destiny's Collide. To the surprise of no one, <laughs> my favorite is Destiny's Collide, followed by Vigor the Visionary, and then Beyond the Corona Walls. Okay. And surprise to no one, because somebody called me out on this on Tumblr. <laughs> Beyond the Corona Walls. <laughs> You're kidding me, and Destiny's Collide, but I'm going to give an honorable mention to Goodbye and Goodwill, because I can still watch it now and laugh the entire time. But See, those are mine. The funny thing with me and Goodbye and Goodwill, like, I saw your list, and... <laughs> Uh, while I like Goodbye and Goodwill okay enough, I might have even listed it as one of my least favorites, actually. But like, like, <laughs> in the grand scheme of Tangled, it is like one of my, you know, least in my, the grand scheme of Tangled, I like it fine. In the grand scheme of season two, mm-hmm. not so much. And I think that it's like, I remember how like anxious everybody was to like get off the island. I was that anxious to get out of Vardera. Yeah. I'm like, it didn't help that like we ended with Beyond the Corner Walls with them leaving Vardaris and we spent two more episodes there. And I'm like, what is going on? They're what leaving. Are we I love Where that. Are we still here. Where are we still here? So it's like, no, there's a lot of really funny stuff. I will agree. A lot of really funny stuff in Goodbye and Goodwill. Um, I still have my whole mental image of Eugene on the floor of the caravan coloring that picture in crayon with his feet kicking me and his tongue hanging out of his mouth while he was drawing. What um, I've noticed in when I was doing this is I pick episodes that are really, like, maybe not, like, the best, but ones that have, like, the biggest impact or the ones that I, like, the most memorable ones. Yeah, so, like, like, that's, like, I was, like, because eh, there's so many more that were probably way better than these. But I'm, like, but these are the ones that, like, if I'm going to rewatch okay, something, yeah. these. <laughs> it's hard yeah, to pick well, favorites. Just, it is. It is. That's why people kept asking me, what's your favorite? I'm, like, I don't 
have a mm-hmm. favorite. I just, I don't. I can't pick a favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but... as you can see, mine leans very Eugene, Dark mm-hmm. Prince heavy. We all share <laughs> Destiny's Collide. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course we all share Destiny's Collide. It was <laughs> the greatest moment. It really was. I'm actually really cracking up that my three favorite episodes of the season are the last three episodes of the yep. season. It's just like, nope, the end of the season was like phenomenal. Yeah. I well, love it. Was. The- it was so good. It was. Good. I mean, because Lost and Found, you get the whole, you know, like, oh, God, there's so much about, first of all, there's Demanitis, which, mm-hmm. like, yes. yay. You know, we all know how much I love Demanitis. So sad that we got that spoiled, but. Mm-hmm. I know, but mm-hmm. then, Sorry about that, okay, fandom. That was, that was my bad. <laughs> the thing that we never talk about that I actually really adore, it's, like, the creepy-ass eyeball spiders. Like, oh, oh, oh my God, I was not ready for that, and I'm so glad I'm not afraid of spiders, but, like, I was like, oh, my God, this is genuinely creepy. What the hell, I was man? Like, you can't have eyeballs and be a skeleton. Your eyeballs are like the first things to go. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is that a lot of people thought they're like eyeballs with skeletons with eyeballs, huh? Oh god, they're not eyeballs. Just like that was so great. And then um also the whole thing, like one of my moments, my like in the entire series, one of my visual moments that I really hold on to is when Rapunzel's hair finally reactivates and you have that moment of Eugene just staring at her in mm-hmm. awe. Like, mm-hmm. I, that's a visual that I hold on to really strongly. And, like, it, I don't, I feel like it's not talked about enough and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's like, no, I love that moment. And that's part of what elevates this one so, so high. And also, she gave him his birthday in this episode. Oh, God. Yes. Like, darn it. And then, <laughs> and then he gets his real birthday. Oh. But, like... Now he's so got good. like you know his Super first birthday. birthday ever. <laughs> oh god, it's so good. And then also she like totally like punks him by like making him think it's her birthday, and he like uh. freaks out, and like then you realize, wait, it's not your birthday. <laughs> he's he's got that he's got that you know like husband married for so long that he's not great with dates anymore, and he's like, oh god, oh god, his birthday. date book. Wait a minute, it's not your birthday. <laughs> like, I'm a sentimental fool. I know when your birthday is. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then of course Destiny's Collide for all of us because Destiny's Collide was like really good yes. in like every way. Well, it was it, such it was a good episode. Like honestly, even like Cass taking the Moonstone, I remember like being hyped during the entire hiatus about where is this going? This is going to be great. Mm-hmm. And then season three was a letdown. We're like, oh, like, oh, that's where it went. But like, like at this point, now that season three is over, if I watch Destinies Collide, I get to the point where Rapunzel is reaching out for the Moonstone, and I turn off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. All right, that episode ended great. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rapunzeltopia. I mean, we discussed we were talking about Matthews, but like Rapunzeltopia mm-hmm. was just so so good. Um, we got to see Brunette yeah. Rapunzel again. Yeah. Um. We got to see Rapunzel, like, having a traumatic moment, actually, when you think about it, mm-hmm. how she's, like, forcing herself back into, like, a happy life because she's just not happy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. And, you know, you get the whole evil Eugene, and you get Godzilla Pascal, and you get, like, Gothel's first lengthy appearance in the series. I mean, she had the bit moment way, way, way back at the beginning. But it was mm-hmm. like the first time we'd seen her since then was this episode. And then Rapunzel gets a clanger with a frying pan. So and satisfying. You get, like, and you get like Eugene struggling against the Vaughns to get to Matthews. And you get, I mean, this was a great episode. It was, I mm-hmm. loved, I loved this episode. It was like so much fun. Well, as everybody calls me out, uh, Beyond the Corona Walls is my like favorite. Because it's great. <laughs> it is great. It was very new dreamy. And it, it was there. it was the first like new dream centered episode that we got. Mm-hmm. And um, it really was. That like, was after the had... really long hiatus, wasn't it? I can't it was. Uh, no, the, what, you know what? The season one to season two hiatus was like three months. So okay. it was long, but it wasn't like dead long. It yeah. wasn't like yeah. half a year long like some of the other ones. But it was just like new season finally starting again plus it was all new dream and that's what we've been begging for it was just wah, smack in the face it was great um yeah. and the, all the songs so, i know you know oh yeah all God. the songs in that episode are just oh. yeah they are they're really really good I got my new they're dream really breakup good. song never thought i'd get that that yeah. was great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was, was great that was fantastic we got two songs 
that we were and great and fun. Yes. And also, also they, you know, gave us Dark Prince Eugene mm -hmm. stuff. So. And probably one of Adira's and, best episodes. I mean, I liked oh, her. Yeah. I'm not going to go into that, but I think that was one of her best episodes. I mean, I mean, it was her introduction. It was really great. I mean, she was so intriguing, like, right yeah. away. I loved her right away. She was great. I mean, completely, completely missed the mark on where I thought her character was going. Yeah. Because watching her, I was like, oh, she's, like, gonna, she and Cass are gonna have this antagonistic thing going on, but then eventually Cass is gonna, like, start training under her. That's mm -hmm. where I thought this was going. And so. No, yeah, that's yeah. too cool. That's not Better. where it's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, Becky, that would mean women would team up, and we can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, I also really like you're kidding me, because anybody that knows me knows that I love, like, New Dream as parents. And this was the closest I got to it. So, like, I know, like, the <laughs> premise, I'm like, this is really stupid, but this is, like, really great. <laughs> okay, see, the funny thing with me and you're kidding me is that the premise is stupid, but despite that, I really liked it. It's funny. It's like... I look at it, I look at it like, you know, it's the same basic premise as Freebird, mm -hmm. but kids instead, which is a very, you know, every 80s cartoon ever sort of thing, you know, yeah. let's turn them all into kids. Mm -hmm. But then, like, first of all, the writing for the kids was really, really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just we'll never get over, like, Lance and his endless questions and asking <laughs> that if Zero was a sound, was a letter, what sound would it make? And, like... <laughs> Just, and then, like, Cass and her whole thing about, like, not only is the floor lava, she insists that you play along. And, like, it was, I mean, so it's like the writing was actually really good. Mm -hmm. You had the whole, you know, new dream parent thing, which is, like, even though I don't want to see their canonical kids, doesn't mean that, like, I dislike seeing them as parents. I yeah. Mean, that was great. I love that. Well, and we got yeah, the line where they were like, if we ever have kids. And I was like, that's the best thing you've ever said, Eugene. <laughs> I, I still Eugene's can't handle ugly it. Crying face. Eugene's yeah. ugly crying yes. face is good. Um, I like loved and hated that Shorty still had a beard. I loved and hated that <laughs> that. Well, actually, I just hated that like little Lance was like egg shaped for like no reason. Egg boy. <laughs> so a little red egg. But I loved the gap between his teeth. So mm -hmm. like, go figure. There were things about his his design that I really liked and things I didn't like. It's like for I, some reason they need to make him be always bald for whatever reason. So I did, I wasn't a huge fan of the character designs, mm -hmm. but I also acknowledge that they were literally like pint sized versions of their adult selves because they wore the same outfits and everything. Mm -hmm. So like I can I can I can okay that's that's just what happened you know. I, <laughs> I, I love that Eugene uh, became not uh, see I like I. I find that my favorite male characters in most things tend to be the boy who either likes cats or can turn into one. Yes. And Eugene was always my, you know, eh, no, because he oh, he never interacts with cats. But in this episode, he's like, like a cat, cat person. I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm. and I was like, ah! <laughs> there's a reason we love you, you fool. <laughs> yep. Let's see. I, I like, love. Ah. I love when Matthews, you know, very calmly, casually takes baby shorty and he's like, ah, quit pulling on my mustache. You have your own mustache. <laughs> so good. But yeah, it's a good one. I love it. Yeah, so, I mean, it was. I agree with you. I don't, I didn't dislike this one. I mm -hmm. really didn't. In fact, the entire House of Yesterday Tomorrow was like a fabulous story arc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was not, I was like, we could stay here for a couple more episodes if we want. Yeah, you know? Let's take one episode from the island and one episode from Barbaros and dedicate them to the House of Yesterday's Tomorrow. Right. Let's do that. <laughs> Five episodes in the House of Yesterday's Tomorrow. That'd be fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> then we could long cast having the horrible time in the door. Oh, God. <laughs> Ruining everything. Um, but yeah, my, my favorites from this season very heavily rely on Dark Prince Eugene <laughs> 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 to the surprise of no one. Because, oh, yeah, Destiny's Collide became real, and I felt less crazy, and <laughs> I, you know, it was a win for many of us, and and Vigor had so many things that probably weren't actually Dark Prince Eugene yeah, wins, it works. but I sure spun them into them. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. I uh -huh. mean... Maybe they weren't intended to be, but they weren't intended not to be. And therefore, there are some times where, I mean, as as a creative entity myself, 
Um, there are times where you write something and you didn't mean for this to foreshadow something, but then it did, and you just yeah. gotta pat yourself on the back mm-hmm. for making yeah. it happen. You're like, like, I didn't intend for that to be, but like the the real of fortune card, like straight up, I like no, like I'm sold on that yeah. Dark Prince Eugene. Mm-hmm. You look yeah. at every aspect of that, I'm like, no, that wasn't crazy. Yep. You weren't crazy. That was a foreshadowing. So I felt <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but... It's okay. <laughs> And then, of course, beyond the Corona Wall, it has so much great new dream. Mm-hmm. It also introduced us to Edmund, mm-hmm. my favorite, yep. after his son. Like, <laughs> oh my God, he's uh, the twenty-five years thing. I was like, you all right. the episode, you're like, that's Eugene's dad, and I'm I like, was what? The 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 episode starts, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Edmund, he's got a cool character design, and then he grabs the moonstone and then it gets knocked out and then when he's talking to Kieran I was like why do his sad puppy dog eyes look like Eugene's what's going on here why does he have Eugene's eyes oh (laughs) because you're a genius Ellie that's why I don't know how I did that I I mean I always lost people like I told every like every crew member who was like wow I can't believe you guessed that I was like that's what I get for being in love with him for eight years. <laughs> yeah, those are familiar. It's like seven or eight years since the movie had come out. So I'm like, it's been, I've been in love with this man. I've been staring into his beautiful eyes for that long. <laughs> this, this is how I, it, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I will have to say though, that when it comes to Dark Prince Eugene, that is possibly the greatest fandom victory in the entire mm-hmm. series. Like people getting what they want out of like Very being the villain and Very being redeemed, it does not it, that pales in comparison to you getting that right. Mm-hmm. Like, holy crap! Like me getting Rapunzel cutting her own hair pales in comparison to you being right about that. It really yeah. does, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that other people jumped onto it. Like when you, cause I talked to both of you guys and you're like, yeah, sure. That could be right <laughs> at the beginning. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I just feel pretty confident in it. And you guys were like, yeah, that's great. And then other people started getting confident in it. And then there was more stuff and you guys were like, oh my God, wait, we're I, like, wait a minute. <laughs> I also really loved, like, I saw multiple people who were like, you know, I didn't buy into this Dark Prince Eugene thing, like, for a long time, but I'm starting to buy it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God. And of course, of course, I didn't get everything right. There were things I threw out there that didn't come true, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, I got the majority right. The best part about that main, yeah, was that night part, when right. I called you after uh-huh. we had watched it i was in the the lobby of the whatever that caesar's palace is in vegas and oh, all these yeah. people are walking around i was like ellie you did it <laughs> these people are like what is going on <laughs> i was so excited <laughs> if anyone asks you could just be like i'm drunk i don't know it's vegas <laughs> i think i, I might have been i don't remember it was vegas <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> oh my goodness it was yeah. wild Still, oh it was so fun one of the greatest one of the greatest times of my life mm-hmm. i honestly I felt like i had won <laughs> yeah like i said that was a victory all of my years of dedication and love to this movie and this series and these characters has brought me mm-hmm. that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah and i i have to give an honorable mention uh as well to forest of no return because that was also a really that great youth episode. episode that was my <laughs> wedding episode so i always love that one yeah Honestly, like, I will say that with Force of No Return, I know that that had, like, seriously mixed reviews among the fandom, mm-hmm. but I loved it, too. Yeah. Like, it was another lot- Eugene-centric episode. Yep. A lot of people are like, why is he being th- Eugene being such a jerk in this? It's like, he's allowed to be, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It's like, honestly, it's not like, it's like, he wants a victory, and, like, if anybody else were to, like, be that way and be like, no, I insist I'm right, you'd be like... Of course you're right. But it's like, mm-hmm. Eugene does it and it's a bad thing. Why? Yeah. Why? You One know? of the best parts of that episode is when he was climbing up the rock and everybody's looking at him with annoyance and Rapunzel's just excited. I was like, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cute. It's yes. so cute. And I love at the very, very beginning when he saves them from the wolves and it's so mm-hmm. great. 
And then, oh, and also, Force of No Return also has all the great stuff with Lance's crush on Adira. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. that came out in full force. Because, you know, <laughs> you had me on the walls where it was just like, did I imagine that angel I saw? And then it's like, after that, he's like, oh, I mean, the best line, the whole thing was like, oh, you're amazing. I know. Just like, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but yeah, so I just, because oh, yeah. you get to see Eugene be like, you know, he, he's, Try, he feels like he's right and he's trying to be the leader but then he you know he doesn't get it right and he and Adira have that really great conversation and then yes. he goes and he is the leader and I'm like that's yes. my prince right there exactly mm-hmm. I mean, that's so great it's super great yeah. I mean I don't care what other people say I love that episode also it had that like what was it the giant frog that ate the crow I always like be like that was one of that was one of Edmund's oh god <laughs> oh <laughs> Just oh, like, gosh. oh god, that was you know honestly that was when I started really noticing like an influx of crows, and I was like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of crows in season two. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> oh, I wonder why. They're leading their boy home. <laughs> oh. My god, yeah. So I yeah, love no, the I agree. So much. yeah, yeah. Forest No Return, absolutely, I agree. Gets gets honorable mention. Yeah. Um, it's a very untalked about episode like mm-hmm. after the fact like people loved it or they hated it and then like moved past it and like never really talk about it anymore so yeah. like nah, no i agree that needs a little bit more love yeah. okay season three mine are return of the king the lost treasure of Hershey's son and plusaton vu and plusaton vu it's only like because of the f- end of the episode like honestly i mean there's there okay it comes down to there's a lot of really great stuff in plusaton vu and there's a lot of stuff that I don't care about in Plus Vu. Like, I'm going to be honest, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, the cast stuff, I don't care about. It bothered me a lot. All of the cast arc bothered me a lot. And like, oh boy, they're reconciled, yay, of course. You know, mm-hmm. oh, she's sobbing and admits she's wrong, of course. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, but you had the you had the haircut, which like still, like, you all heard me last podcast. I cried talking about mm-hmm. the haircut. Yes. Yeah. So, got the haircut you've got the proposal you've got edmund and eugene fighting side by side you've got edmund and eugene fighting face to face you've you got, got you know yeah edmund and the dark or the brotherhood all kicking the crap out of yeah, eugene was one it. of the greatest moments of my I life it. i was like <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you i was like oh my and gosh <laughs> This isn't killing yeah, then, Eugene again, but this right. is pretty dang close. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And killing him by, like, two people that he's always drilled, three people that he's tr- two people he's always trusted, one person that he only just started to distrust, and one person who he's never trusted. So, yeah. um, and then honorable mention goes to Cassandra's Revenge. It really does. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, uh, that's mine right. is a, f- mine are, of course, Return of the King is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It was the greatest episode ever, I would say. No, probably Destiny's <laughs> Collide before that. But anyways, uh, then I I put Cassandra's Revenge as my second because I really liked that they officially made Eugene 26. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> shut up all the people saying they have an eight-year age difference. <laughs> uh, I, re- I really love Cass and Varian's song in that one too. I do, I do. And the animation, oh mm. my gosh! I, I, she, okay, she deserves an award for that. Like seriously, next yeah. year at the Annie's, if she's not, if she doesn't win the Annie, I'm gonna riot. I'll mm. just like, oh I, yeah, I get, I get mad every year when I'm watching the Annie's and Tangle doesn't take home things. Like yeah. the, 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 the time that it did. Congratulations to Amanda. But mm. like, then like all the times it doesn't, and I get mad every single time. But this time I will be livid because that bit of animation was like all over twitter like yeah. seriously it's, it's a freaking tiktok meme now that's it all is. it is <laughs> yep. it's amazing it's People amazing use it all the time it's ridiculous i mean yep. what the hell <laughs> so like tangle has made a tiktok like twice in song format yeah. so come on people but uh yeah so like i agree with you there um her proposing yeah. to him or <laughs> planning yeah. to that like all that, that stuff like Honestly, when I said that Cassandra's Revenge was honorable mention, it's, like, tied. It really is. Because it's, like, uh, right there. I, I put it up there because there's lots of stuff I love in it. I mean, there is... It was the first episode that I didn't actually mind Cassandra being the villain mm-hmm. as much. 
I was like, okay. Because she was like villain and evil. she owned it. And I was like, I can, yeah. like, I like this. Like, she, own it, girl. She his birthday party. <laughs> I was like, okay, her. she's like Maleficent here. Yeah. Like, you I know, agree. She's I owning honestly, her villainess. Yeah. I honestly agree. And if she had been that way through all of season three, I'd have been yeah. all over that. Yeah. But her being the whiffle, you know, the, the waffling back and forth and like having no yeah. clear cut direction, yeah. like, no, that's what a lot of what ruined her arc for me. Like, not and, just the golf thing, it's that like her journey was not good to watch. It was just like, it was bleh. I loved like, all the dialogue in the, the birthday scene when she came in and she was just like owning it and she was snapping on him. I was like, yes, yeah. I like this cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. of course, well, okay, I'll agree with you there. The, I absolutely. The, the final battle with Super Saiyan Rapunzel. Yes. Yes. Just, okay. Yeah. Over she, Eugene. She kicking yes. her butt. Oh, oh my God. Okay. She's like, you hurt my man? I think you may have just been <laughs> to make I think you just convinced me to make Cassandra's Revenge my third and then move Pusatov Vu to Honorable Mention. That's what just happened. <laughs> You're right. You're right. This is a better episode. It's a great episode. A episode. And then after Cassandra's Revenge, I had to think a lot about this because I dislike so much season three. <laughs> but I had to put King and Queen of Hearts because that episode was That's really cute. One. And all of the Trevor stuff was freaking hilarious. Yeah. Rapunzel oh, going feral, <laughs> kicking the yeah. painting down, oh, yelling yeah, at Fred. Oh, yeah. Yeah, feral. <laughs> Rapunzel, we get them. That's the one where they sign the book at the end, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. They sign the book um, at the end. Yeah. We get <laughs> egg Fred. <laughs> <laughs> egg. Oh, his eggs. Oh, my God. And more Dariana, mm -hmm. which was more great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I really like that episode. Yeah, that's a good one. I thought that was a good. Lance got a new outfit for the first time. Like right? ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I put that as my third. That was good. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, mine was Return of the King, like everybody else. Oh, uh, Lost crazy. Treasure because that was also just crack the episode, and it was oh, so unexpectedly so delightful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really, really was. And then uh. The finale is probably my favorite, even though I didn't like a lot of the finale. But then I'm going to give an honorable mention to <laughs> Flynn Poster just because of Eugene's hilarious dialogue in that episode. Like, he Zach nailed like... the delivery of some of those lines. <laughs> yeah, I, I love every time Eugene talks in yeah. this episode. Um... <laughs> when he goes, he makes me sick. It's... It kills me. <laughs> other half of that episode the yeah. other person there that makes me filled with rage <laughs> <sighs> well and that's when we found out he was the captain and that was very unexpected uh it was very unexpected. series I twist mean, that, that i was very happy for yeah but yeah it's good it's good i like oh uh, i also kind of liked that it did conclude the whole baron arc yeah mm -hmm. and that like i like the acknowledgement of the baron basically like doesn't know what to do with himself, so he's gonna keep being antagonistic, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, that was like an interesting way to put it. And it's like, literally, some villains are villains because they don't know how to not be villains anymore. They're just like, I don't want to be different. I want to just have everything back the way it was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was that was an interesting thing. Yeah, so, so we've been over, basically, why we love these episodes. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I mean, uh -huh. Return of the King... I mean, What's straight up, all of that. I mean, it's, oh my it's god, a great episode! Like, because not I... only did you have Eugene actually getting to express his disregard for Edmund, is being like, "Yeah, look, I don't have to like the guy. You know, he abandoned me." You got them bonding. You got pocket pudding. You got the Stabbingtons <laughs> return, and then like the window into why they would be invited to the wedding. You and know. The <laughs> you got the sash. Oh my god. Yes. I remember oh god. With the I sash, can't... I remember that night, like going to bed and I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about the episode and I thought about the sash and I just burst into tears. I'm like lying in bed sobbing because I'm like, I didn't they put the sash in. And just like <laughs> so he said, yeah. even though he's not there and animated, because he he is there. You can't convince me otherwise. Of course yeah. he there. Of course he's there. He is there in spirit because he's on, he made the sash. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yes! Ha -ha! But yeah, I just, I loved, I loved the movie callback in that episode where yeah. 
the simpatico line was him just quoting and i'm like of course you were quoting a book you freaking nerd yeah that's what <laughs> found out just how big of a nerd eugene is that he's actually probably can he's probably quoting the book like a lot of the time oh, yeah. you know absolutely like i um, know not who you are nor how i came to find you but may i just say and then he fills in his own blank but you know he's quoting the book there oh, like of course he is what a like <laughs> oh nerd he's such a nerd it's such a good episode yeah. i also i just yeah i loved all of their interactions of course i hate the name horace so much <laughs> what is the end? It comes around, and he but starts then, calling him Eugene, and it's great. But then great. you also have the great delivery of how it's possible that my real name is even worse than Eugene. <laughs> that yeah, that that was and adorable. Then, and then you also get it's Eugene. <laughs> it's like All of such great yeah. line deliveries in that I episode. Also, I, I came up with a great headcanon, which I think, I don't know if I've shared it on the podcast, but I think I've shared it with both of you, which is Eugene talks about losing Flynn Rider in the last Lost Treasure of Scotia by accidentally dropping it off a cliff. And I'm like, hmm, he dropped it onto Hamuel. Yeah, that's Probably. My Hamuel's way he is. Yep. Yep. And I just, I love that. I love that so much. I watched that episode this morning because I was like, <laughs> you know, I need some Fitz bonding. There I you just, go. But yeah, season three kind of peaked for me at that episode. I was like, yeah, <laughs> we're done. We can go home. I have gotten everything I wanted except Bastion and Fitz babies. Um, <laughs> oh, Fitz babies. But otherwise, everything I wanted. Yeah, and Fitz's mom's name. You know, that was also mm-hmm. a very important thing that no one gave me. Well, at least we know the name of Edmund's Bearhood, which is something I guess we all wanted. But... Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne. Crew just knows Daphne. what we want. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely needed to know Dabney's name. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so um, bottom three episodes of each season. Now, turn away if you don't want negativity, because like, oh my god, that's the whole point of this part. But we're going to have more after that, so maybe just fast forward. Um, So uh, season one, not in the mood, Max's (laughs) enemy and challenge of the brave, which is kind of funny for me, because it used to be Rapunzel's enemy was way at the bottom, but... That was largely because um, after Tangled Before or After and then What the Hair, Rapunzel's Enemy was a letdown. It was like, yeah. oh, it is going to be a day in the life mm-hmm. kind of series. You know, so it was like, it was, it was unexpected. But then like over the course of time, I've grown to really love Rapunzel and Monty's like antagonistic thing. The whole message of everybody doesn't have to like you was like super important. Mm-hmm. And so like, and then also the whole watching Rapunzel attempt to lie with the whole Miss Misty thing. Like, I love watching <laughs> yeah. her try to lie because she's so bad at it. Um, so, yeah. So, after a while, that one, like, grew on me. And it's not like I dislike Max's enemy, really. Because these aren't really in order. I just, like, opened up a, a mm-hmm. list of um, the episodes and just filled in blanks. So, it's not like I really dislike Max's enemy. I really, I like, I love seeing um, Lady Kane again. Because I mm-hmm. wasn't sure if we ever were. Um... I loved Max's nightmare. That was like hysterically funny. <laughs> um, like the one and only actual dog in the entire series is in this episode, and it's Mabel. Um, <laughs> but then it's like it was fun, and I enjoyed it, and I like, I liked having an episode that focused on one of the non-humans. You mm-hmm. know, it's like yeah, it's it's because it's sort of like similar with Pascal's story. I like that that Pascal's story focused. The, the focus of the episode was not on the humans, and I kind of mm-hmm. like it when they do that, which is why Davy Animals is so great. By the way, that gets honorable mention up there. Oh, yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's not like in Challenge of the Brave, we all know my issues with Challenge of the Brave. Eugene is great in Challenge of the Brave. I love Eugene in Challenge of the mm-hmm. Brave. I don't like how they treated Eugene in Challenge of the Brave, though I understand why they had to do that, because if they let him stay in the arena, then he never would have let all that go down. Um yeah. But, like, that was, oh, God, I'm still not over that. Like, to this day, I am not over woman who is, you know, supposedly her best friend and supposed to take care of Rapunzel, knowingly sending her unarmed into combat. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, never going to be over that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, my, my least favorite is definitely Challenge of the Brave. And all of mine have, like, 
all of my things are very personal to me, like, why I don't like them. Like, Challenge of the Brave, it's like, okay, that's not how friends are supposed to treat each mm-hmm. other. What? This isn't setting, this isn't a great setup for Cassandra and Rapunzel being best friends. It makes me think that they're not good friends and that they should stop. Um, not in the mood. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely has fun parts, but it just was so uncomfortable for me to see Eugene like that. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, one of my big issues with Not in the Mood was mm-hmm. that, um, like, I know that, like, literally the point of that episode was to get that potion into Varian's hands, mm-hmm. and I just yeah. feel like there had to have been a better way to do it. Yeah. You know? Yep. And then, also, this is, like, a minor thing, it's just a personal nitpick, but, like, I have always had, like... I've always imagined Rapunzel's favorite flavor to be lemon, and while she likes lemon meringue pie and stuff like that, her not mm-hmm. liking lemonade bothers me. And yeah. even so that's brought up in, and then it being brought up in Queen for a Day is fine. I'm like, okay, I can accept it. It's just brought up that she doesn't actually like lemonade, but then she like drinks it anyway, and I'm like, yeah. what the hell? Why are you doing? You know you don't like lemonade. What yeah. the hell? So like that made no sense. Like, mm-hmm. one of the little things I did like about it, because I do like trying to find that ray of sunshine in these things, one of the things I did like about it was um, I really liked that after the potion took effect that Eugene called Cass Cassandra. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. When that, that happened, was I went, oh, damn! Oh, my God! He's calling <laughs> pronouncing her name right. Oh, my God. So that was fun. Um, yeah. and, and then there was uh, a really good animation of, like, shadow work in that episode. And then... Mm-hmm. There was, like, when everybody was in their correct character, there was some good stuff going on. And then, like, when everybody who was not the main trio were out of character, that was actually kind of fun. But, like, yeah, overall, it was just, like, so effing pointless. Like, Mm -hmm. just find a better way to do it, guys. Yeah. And then my last episode, this might be surprising, and, yeah, but it's, it's Pascal's story. Because that was the first episode that uh, triggered me. <laughs> it was really hard to watch. And, like, I watched it at midnight. And when I finished, uh, I cried myself to sleep. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that episode. Mm-hmm. There are things I like about it. But I just, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's definitely. Because, uh, you know, Tangled has been my thing for the longest time. It is one of the things that has prevented me from hurting myself or worse and so to have it hurt me was really horrible and yeah i mean that's why i don't like pretty much all of season three is because it kept doing that Mm -hmm. but yeah that was the first time it happened and it was not fun Mm -hmm. yeah so uh my first one is challenge of the brave and then my second one is also challenge of the brave and then my third one is Great Exploitations, but just because I think that one's boring. It's not very memorable to me. Yeah, and, um, that's fair. And Eugene sounds like he has a cold eye entire time, and it's just weird. But, uh, yeah, I hate Challenge of the Brave. I've hated that episode, and I have not been quiet about it, so people know. I think it's so stupid. <laughs> it's the stupid. And, yes, there are really good parts to it. Like, Eugene is great in that oh, episode. Yeah. And Pascal with yeah. the little horn kills me every time. But, oh, oh yeah. mm, Cass can get bent in that and episode. Things and calling things by names that they already like she invents stuff that already exists that they yes. like. <laughs> and, the, and the whole hair thing was it there was some some cute parts to it but it's just i don't like the whole cast and variant thing and i just i wasn't yeah. a fan of it and it just i'm like meh meh yeah I'm, i agree yeah. it's like it's like also i mean it's like it gave us real plot but it didn't give us real plot until the very very end and i feel like season one did that a lot yeah. like you can have some plot at the end then you can have some plot. Yeah, and I remember, I think, didn't, like, the previews for that really amp up there being plot? And we read about that episode in the books, and people were like, oh, there's a lot of plot coming up, and we were like, ooh, it's very brief. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know if that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember that, yeah. But, so, so, yeah, yeah. I agree with you that it's, like, it's not a great episode. It's yeah. It's fine. I mean, yeah. if if you are it, not a very stan or a cast stan, then it's fine, you know? Yeah. It does... I mean, it does definitely show more of Cass being a terrible friend. Yeah. Because she manipulates the heck out of Varian. And I'm like, why are we trying to save her from being a villain? I don't understand. She's been a villain since season one. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, I was. I remember being like, you know, the one thing I will say that I always found interesting about Great Expectations was that it actually kind of has the format of a classic fairy tale. Because it's like, if Cassandra is the protagonist of said fairy tale, then it's like, girl wants to do thing. Girl's not allowed to do thing unless she finishes task. Girl get someone to help her with said task by giving them by promising them a favor in return girl breaks promise girl goes back on breaking promise and makes amends and i'm like that's actually very fairy tale esque just this whole episode is very fairy tale esque in that regard it made mm-hmm. it interesting i i for a long time i considered doing a rewrite of it that actually framed it like a fairy tale and then i'm not i'm not way past that i'm like eh, whatever but yeah so it also was like considering the the friend who was like tasked to help was like kind of magical and yeah no it's alchemy and he would kick my ass for calling it magic but like (laughs) it's like by special means that protagonist girl does not have available to her they are able to help you know so just like it's got an interesting format but Mm -hmm. like overall it's just like nah it's it's, yeah i agree with you it's pretty meh all things considered (laughs) um so in season two freebird goodbye and goodwill like i said i did label it as one of my least favorite episodes but that's because in the vast arc of season two i loved almost every episode Mm -hmm. so uh free bird goodbye and goodwill and then the eye of pincosta yeah uh mine's also free bird and goodbye and goodwill but for my third one i picked rapunzel day one because this i feel like started the trend of cassandra being shoehorned into eugene's Mm storylines yeah that had already happened and i hate that yeah yeah that was a huge reason why i hated the end of the finale is because i was yeah. like yeah yeah pretty did this we did it with eugene like nine years ago and i hate that you are shoehorning cassandra into it because mm-hmm. she doesn't deserve <laughs> yeah no I, i'm definitely with you on that i am so yeah um... it was weird to have because they were like redoing the movie but with cassandra and eugene's place and i'm like thanks i hate it (laughs) yeah no i'm with you there i that was that got honorable mention on mine i didn't like write it down but Mm -hmm. like yeah uh so my first one was keeper of the spire because i can't stand calliope but i really like seeing (laughs) rapunzel get annoyed i think that was hilarious um (laughs) but then i have pincosta because i I don't like Stallion, and I I just didn't like the episode. And Freebird, because it was trash. But I did like the uh, the boys having the a good old-fashioned muscle challenge. Yeah, <laughs> that was, like, the I, only good part. I will say, like, yeah, the boys' muscle challenge was fun. That was a, that, like, I wouldn't say it redeemed the episode, but yeah. it was the good part of the episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, with I have been cost the thing is that, like, I loved Stallion in Beyond the Corona Walls. I loved mm-hmm. her character. I loved that she existed. I loved that she was this thing. And then... Like, the, I, she didn't need to be redeemed or semi-redeemed or anything like that. And I hate that Rapunzel kind of forgave her, but Eugene got zero input on her forgiveness. Yeah. It's like, yep. basically, they took Eugene's story and handed it to Rapunzel and asked her, her to handle it for him. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. unnecessary. That yep. wasn't, I mean, I, I loved, I loved Lance and the pie. Um, I'll never tell. I love Eugene breaking out of jail, so they had to put him all Hannibal Lecter style so that he couldn't break out of jail again. Um, oh, my poor darling. I loved Eugene being like, oh, we don't have to go to this town. They're like, you're wanted there, aren't you? He's like, oh, yes, extremely wanted. Just like, I mean, there were small things about this episode I did like, but just overall, it just felt extremely unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, it's like, it, it's a big thing of it, like, honestly, everybody doesn't have to grow to like Rapunzel. I'm fine with people mm-hmm. continuing to dislike her. And so yeah. this was, like, part of the trend of, oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, like, okay, Uncle Monty growing to like Rapunzel was, like, very gradual over the course of time and never technically cemented except when he was standing behind her and ready to mm-hmm. fight for her. But other than that, like, even as far as, you know, um who's afraid of the big bad wolf, he was still, like, giving her old licorice because he still doesn't like her that much. Mm-hmm. And it just, yeah. They, they just have this thing going on, and I like that, like, him growing to like her is so gradual that it's believable. Like, yeah. but Stallion grows to like her after one forced adventure together? No. Like, mm-hmm. no. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. And mm-hmm. just, it was yeah. so unnecessary. So, yeah. Um, I went over, I mean, there are some good things about good, Goodbye and Goodwill. A lot of it was like, I was just tired of Vardaros. I don't want them to leave Vardaros. 
Yeah. Um, I I will never ever 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 be over Eugene washing dishes with his gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Anything that spoils me the animation, it's that one moment. I'm like, why are you doing that? <laughs> Those are leather gloves, and they're going to absorb the water. Like, <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> no. But it did also have, you know, that cute little new dream moment directly following him washing dishes with his gloves on. Yes. I mean, like like I said, most things, there are, I mean, there are good things about the episode. There are mm -hmm. good things about Rapunzel Day 1, like when Rapunzel goes feral in the forest. Oh, yeah. Um, I love that thought, part. But you got Eugene's like... Coming. Yeah, and Eugene is underestimating her in that episode. He's like, well, it's just out of the Tower of Rapunzel, so I think we'll be okay. And I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, oh boy. We're gonna, <laughs> yeah, my kicked. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. So well, I, did, uh, I did like those aspects, but I absolutely agree with you that shoehorning Cassandra into Rapunzel, into Eugene's roles, into Eugene's movie roles, yeah. it's like, that, 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 that makes me uncomfortable every time it happened. Yeah. It irritates yeah. the hell out of me. I don't mm -hmm. like it. Um... Also, um, I will agree with you that in Rapunzel Day 1, that was the second instance of this thing has happened to Rapunzel and we don't really get Eugene's input on it. Yeah. So it's like he's right there and they're not allowing him to react appropriately. Because mm -hmm. he, like, he even had the moment of like, well, I don't know how to take this, so I'm just going to like stand here and not do anything for a couple minutes. And it's like, no, Eugene, my God, you are Eugene Fitzherbert. Yeah. That is not okay. So, yeah. like, yeah. So, no, I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. That got a lot of weak points. Um, okay. Keeper of the Spire, yeah. Sorry, Kelsey. Not only do I like Calliope, <laughs> also it had Rapunzel. Like, <laughs> her cool. Awesome. Um, also, it had, like, the Spire, which had all those fantastic homages to yeah. stuff in it. That was yeah. amazing. Oh, it had, had Saki in it, too. Saki. It had Saki. Oh, <laughs> Saki, no! <laughs> I mean, as I know, think about it this way. As annoying as as Calliope is, also think about how much she annoyed Cassandra, which was awesome. Yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> Cass almost murdered her twice. So I think one of my great. favorite parts of that episode was when Rapunzel yells at Eugene. She goes, "Stay out of this, Eugene." <laughs> <laughs> that's like your header on your Tumblr. Yep. I think it's just your head on your Tumblr. Stay out of this, Cassandra. I just but, uh, I just realized something that made me angry. What? Remember how Calliope thinks that Cassandra is Rapunzel's mom? <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Well, her mom is Gothel, so right. she's not. Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. I pointed out on Tumblr, and I was like, oh, God. I think, like, I saw it and didn't reblog it, because I was like, ugh. <laughs> I'm um, angry right now. Let's see. And also, um, it had that fantastic turnaround when oh, the color yes. was coming after me. It had that animation camera spin. That was awesome. I loved mm -hmm. that. Um, so, like, yeah, there's a lot I really actually really liked about Keeper of the Spire, which is why I'm like, no, nah, it's not my favorite, but it's so not my least favorite either. <laughs> but it's under it's understandable if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's all good. Absolutely. And then we all have Freebird on there. because yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> there. Yeah. it's Freebird's trash. And we've <laughs> talked at length about it. I have to laugh, though, that in both season one and season two, Ellie and I are like, this episode and this episode and this episode, and then Kelsey's like, but one of your episodes that you both hate is one of the ones I love. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, because I understand it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And yeah. See, one thing I love about you ladies is that we have this podcast because we can have the discussions, and they're not arguments. We're like, I see your point of view. I don't mm -hmm. agree with you. And I can, and I can admit there's some good things about your choices or mm -hmm. bad things yeah. about your choices. Well, it's like Keeper. Really I wonderful. hate it, but there's also very good parts of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Tangled the series as a whole. I love it, but I hate a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, on to season three, which is parts that, like, uh, talk about parts that there are parts I hate. Um, so I should really just say everything except the three episodes I already liked. <laughs> so, no, that's not true, because Day of the Animals, and I like to be very afraid, and... Um, there are parts of the premiere that I liked and parts, every part with Eugene and Edmund in the finale, but yes. otherwise pretty much everything okay. else is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Tale of Two Sisters is like my least favorite episode in the entire series. I hate this episode. And yeah, I have been able to like find a couple things about it that I like, like isolated all by its little lonesome, but I hate this episode. Like 
going off the rails ranting hate this episode. Like, oh my god. Like, mm -hmm. talk about an episode that, ah, uh, I hate this episode. That is, ah, uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So, the second part is uh, Once the Handmaiden, specifically, like, the first half of it, with, like, all up until the part where, like, the battle starts. Like, the battle's amazing. Mm -hmm. But, like, the whole rest of it, I hate this episode. Um, and then Beginnings. And it took me a long time to figure out what my third one was. And Beginnings is, like, everything that, like, okay, the, the Nook cuddles are great. I love mm -hmm. that part. Um, the beautiful animation of uh, Cass is totally a lesbian is great. <laughs> um, seeing Brunette Rapunzel again was great. But, like, I am so pissed that this whole thing starts with, like, Cass using Rapunzel to get what she wants, and then Rapunzel getting furious, which I liked, and then Cass yeah. deciding that she would, like, rather stay Rapunzel's friend, and then she, like, holds that against her for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're telling me that that's how this is going to go down? Oh, I also really like the bit where, like, Eugene and Rapunzel were talking, and then Frederick and Ariana walked in, and he had to, like, literally tap dance his way through the conversation. <laughs> the soft um, sapato? <laughs> that was Great little moment. But, like, yeah, overall, like, I just, uh, beginnings is, like, not good for me. But honorable mm -hmm. mention is the beginning of Rapunzel's Return. And when I say the beginning of Rapunzel's Return, I mean specifically the part where they canonized that Gothel is Cassandra's mother. Yep. And, oh, like, yeah. If you guys could have seen my face watching that part of the episode, I was, like, angry. Mm -hmm. I think the entire I episode. I think I watched it after you guys. But yeah. I got to that part and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. How is Becky not murdered everyone in existence by this point? <laughs> the oh whole time God. I was like, I trust the writers. I trust the writers. I trust the writers. <laughs> that whole episode was like a fever dream. I gotta say, I remember holding in my heart very strongly how much I love the number of people on Tumblr who immediately went, are you okay, Bex? Like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. So many people asked me if I was all right. So, it like, yeah. It's so sad because I got such a big win at the end of or at the end of season two, and then you got the worst loss yeah. ever. Yeah, at and the beginning of season three, it was a yeah. loss for all of us, honestly. Oh, because so like, stupid. The worst plot line. Honestly, that happened. Like they canonized Gothel being Cass's mom, and my brain went, "Oh, that's how we're gonna do season three, mm -hmm. huh?" Yeah. And like immediately, I was like, "Okay, am I even going to enjoy this season?" This was like a terrible direction that they chose to go. Um, I accepted it, and then they just kept digging it in, and I hate that. And they gave us Return of the King hurt. after, though. That was like a nice little soothing band aid. Yeah. Like, that's Here, I know you're mad. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I say. That season three peaked at Return of the King because the first episode <laughs> wasn't great. The second episode was Phenomenal. amazing. And then everything kind of just went downhill from there. <laughs> also, like, I remember watching uh, Rapunzel's Return again the next day and being like, okay, now that I already know that this is the case, I'm able to enjoy this episode more. Because, like... That's like punching my computer screen. And, like, Marion... <laughs> Uh, redemption arc was a little bit rushed but it was satisfying regardless mm -hmm. um like the song like i really really love um stronger than ever before um i love rapunzel eugene and lance having a trio song that was like great mm -hmm. um and all the, all the kingdom dance references but like here's the thing it's like this is a case where a movie references reference was used appropriately they're having a party so doing the same folk dance at this party that they did in this other party mm -hmm. makes perfect sense so like mm -hmm. i was fine with that. that was great and then they like in stronger than ever before they kept like referencing the wedding which was like made my little heart go pitter patter so like it's really yeah. only mm -hmm. the first five minutes or so of of rapunzel's return that i can't stand and then also yeah. the end of no time like the past because like it yeah. was a fun episode, and then they crashed it in the last three minutes. Yep. And I'm like, why did you have to do that? Like, why did you Hindenburg the ending? <laughs> they feel the humanity! <laughs> Just like, yeah. So, like, honorable mention of things I hate. Like, yeah, those I hated those parts. So, yeah. I also thought it was very funny, though, when, like, uh, the crew were like, why does everybody hate this episode so much? We're like, because the ending was crap. Because the ending implied that Rapunzel changed Eugene's mind in the past so that he'd agree with her in the present. Mm -hmm. And Eugene was like, like Eugene was absolutely 
absolutely right that she had every right to yeah. like that she needed to let Cass go when she wasn't doing it and like okay honestly that yeah okay yeah okay, okay. yeah okay <laughs> it's like it's like crew you you were doing really 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 great in your in your flips there but then uh you broke uh both your legs and <laughs> you shot all of the judges at and the you end also- of your of your thing like and you also didn't stick the landing my you god you just didn't stick the landing there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you fell down broke your legs rolled into the judges table knocked everything over and then yeah. set the arena on fire yep, pretty much <laughs> oh okay you guys uh, so okay. i have the, i have the same bottom three as you uh except i switched be- beginnings uh and once a handmaiden because yeah I liked the end of Once a Handmaiden, and mm-hmm. I think we can all agree on that. Um, but yeah, Beginnings is another one that I'm like, <laughs> why are we doing this? Why? <laughs> you you keep showing me things that make me go, Rapun- Rapunzel and Cassandra aren't friends. Yeah. Nope. Rapunzel might think they're friends, but Cassandra is being a manipulative jerk and has oh. been from the beginning. So I don't know why you want me to want them to get back to being friends, big air quotes there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> bad. <laughs> all those episodes, bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so mine, like we've all said, was the first half of Once a Handmaiden. And it's funny because I said that afterwards and someone was like, how can you like the second half? That's when everything goes to crap. I was like, yeah, exactly. That's the best part about it. <laughs> It's yeah. insane. Shut up. Varian well, freaking like, shoots Cassandra. <laughs> well, like, Bazooka. In the first half, well, like, in the first half, it's like she seemed, first of all, okay. Okay. So the last time Cassandra sees Rapunzel, she's left her in a cave to die. Yes. The next time we see Cassandra, she's strolling around like there's nothing wrong. And right. then she finds it's the like, mirror shard. And it's like, what the absolute bad word that because it's the podcast I'm not going to say, <laughs> but you all know which word I mean. And also then she's like, you're a teary? Oh dearie me, I shouldn't have betrayed Rapunzel. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> so many other reasons. It wasn't just Zontiri manipulating you. Yeah. You've been... Ah! <laughs> she goes to, and then when she goes to try to like fake her apology or however you want to look at it, when she goes to like try to like test the waters to see if apologizing would even work, like she was acting so out of character mm-hmm. for the entire time. I'm like, no. I'm like, did you actually no. take the potion from not in the moon again? <laughs> right? Like, did you oh eat my one of Varian's purple cookies? <laughs> <laughs> What's going yeah. on here? You're so, not Cassandra. Like, so like the only moment in the first half that I particularly liked was uh when she and the gopher were fighting over the cloak like oh yeah that's fun and, and so you had all those transformations and and stuff and that was fun and i also was highly amused that the gopher they chose had a literal target on its back like that was like i also i love that we got to see gregorio again yes 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 <laughs> but also like that Eugene like forgot which if it was Bimberries or Dimberries again, and he grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> He's such a dummy. <laughs> uh, I love him. <sighs> but yeah. yeah, and then like the whole Team Awesome bit was good. Yeah, like so it's mm-hmm. like it's not like there's nothing in Once a Handmaid again that I just I like, yeah. but like does I think that was so kind of a consensus with all of the episodes. There are things we like and things we don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except Pretty for much. except except for Tale of Two Sisters. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, no. Well, but Kelsey is... There's only one part I liked in that. (laughs) And that was when Cass goes, make your hair do the bright thing. I was like, shit, what? (laughs) That had me dying for like three days. Like, I was laughing so hard. That was the only good part of that whole episode. Okay, okay. And Rapunzel, as we are fighting out, Rapunzel is very pretty when she seems to be dead. So, like, I'm I'm like, I'm uncomfortable with how pretty she is when she's dead. (laughs) Or seems to be dead. I'm like, stop making her so pretty. That makes me feel weird. I'm like, okay, touche, Cass. Thanks for that. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, my third was Pascal's Dragon. Because I really, I don't, I don't remember much about that episode. <laughs> so it's just, it, it was, was very, like, not it memorable It was definitely boring and pointless and felt very out of place in I, where it was. I was going over my list today with Neil, and I was like, I don't even, was I high for that episode? I don't remember it. Like, <laughs> I only like the part where Rapunzel was flying. That made me happy. 
<laughs> yes, that's very cute. Oh, uh, I will say that the thing with Pascal's Dragon with me is that, first of all, I kind of really liked that they explained Nigel's mindset. Oh, that was the Nigel episode. Because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what? It just occurred to me that I'm the one who wrote the talking points for Pascal's Dragon. So, like, it doesn't surprise me at all that you guys don't really remember that at all. <laughs> you know? I'm like, oh, no. Like, I was, like, the only one who really kind of enjoyed that one. And yeah. so it explained Nigel's mindset, which I appreciated because we had, you know, all of the Nigel hate going on mm -hmm. in the series. Like, like especially from the Varian fans. All of the Nigel hate. And I'm like, you know, he was just doing his freaking job. And then that one kind of explained yeah. why he was so afraid of it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I like that. I like that they bothered to do that. I also like that in Be Very Afraid, his biggest fear was dragons everywhere. And then we found out why that's his biggest fear. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it did tie into previous things. So I did enjoy that. And also, one of the things I really liked about it was that I think I must have been feeling really, really sentimental that day because it was on and I was just sitting here going like, oh God, we're getting so much closer to the end. Mm -hmm. And like, I was like tearing up when the theme song was playing on this one. Cause I was just like, Oh God. Well, Cause right, that was the, over. that was the first one back in the last like set yeah. of episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was, I think I was like, I don't dislike it because there was a lot of sentiment attached to it. Yeah. And it was, it was cute. It was sweet. Their idea of what dragons can and can't do was kind of odd. And, um, the fact that the dragons did not come aid them at the end of the series was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, any like, of the I, other seven I kingdoms. <laughs> After like, I was, sorry, can't see it. <laughs> I was so sure that like the finale was gonna have like everybody show mm -hmm. up, and then it didn't happen. I'm like, well, I'll it guess was a gonna be like Avengers Endgame, and yeah. then it just wasn't. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I guess a bunch of villagers with pitchforks are gonna have to do. Okay then. Yeah. All the other kingdoms were like, hey, you guys okay? We heard stuff like crazy. <laughs> Thanks for helping. <laughs> My least favorite part of Pascal's dragon is the dragon's name. It is the laziest thing. Oh yeah. That has ever existed. And yeah. I refuse to believe that Rapunzel would come up with a name that lazy. Yeah. She named her chameleon Pascal. <laughs> After a mathematician, for God's sakes. <laughs> She's like, like oh, a little big guy. No, shut up. <laughs> I'm like a little big guy, that's what you're going she, with. Is she drunk? <laughs> I think she would even come up with a four creative name if she was drunk. <laughs> My God, just it made me so. I was like, I have to put little big guy on the names list. All right, <laughs> screw you, writers. What does little big guy mean? It means little big oh, guy. And That's then big, big, and then guy. That's what it means. <laughs> Jerk. Oh, tangled. <laughs> At least Brock is kind of funny because it means badger and it just rained badger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it should have been Bastion! <laughs> okay, I'm really curious, Ellie. I have to know. If they had named him Bastion, would you have liked him? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> he was really annoying. I, I, don't, I don't know because he's annoying and he keeps stealing Eugene's things and I don't like that he looks exactly like Eugene because he's annoying and awful and... Only Eugene should look like that. How does he and look they never like explain Eugene? that. Does his dad look I like Edmund? Like does his mom look like Fitz's mom? <laughs> I know. You it's know just... that like people can I... just look alike no. sometimes, right? That's just what happens. No. <laughs> no. I mean, honestly, I'm not gonna like go back on this over again because I know I mentioned it in the podcast about the episode, but it's like, I mean, I feel like if it was CGI, they wouldn't be identical. I feel like if it was CGI, they'd like. Do if some slight had differences. More money, if the series had right. done better, he probably right. would have looked exactly the same. It just was frustrating. <laughs> I didn't I didn't like how how his Brock's character arc ended either. I was like, this is lame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Absolutely fair. Okay. I'm now we're going all to... out in this. I'm like, I don't like oh, that hey, story. I am. Hey, that's okay. Die in a fire. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're doing this. This is cathartic, man. We get the bitch yeah. about the stuff we don't like. So, <laughs> yeah. So, a tale of two sisters can go die in a fire, and then yep. another fire, and then a third fire, and then a nuclear blast. <laughs> that's how much I hate that episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, I find it very funny that I cannot pick an overall favorite episode of the entire series, but I definitely have a least favorite, and that's yeah. it. Just, yeah, <laughs> the end. Uh, yeah. And I, I just want to add as an honorable mention, I know I discussed it a little bit, but you know how much I hate Cassandra being shoehorned into Eugene's stuff. So when she died and then Rapunzel cried on her corpse, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm out. 
I'm out. I don't even want to see the proposal at this point because I'm <laughs> so angry. That's how angry I was. I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Also, it kind of would have been a fitting ending for Cassandra if she had died because yeah. then you, she had re- that was like the true redemption. She like, you know, sacrificed herself to save the kingdom and Rapunzel, and I would have been like, woohoo, this is great. I know people who love Cassandra would have hated that, and I that's fair. And mm-hmm. I totally, and you know, I don't hate on anybody who likes Cassandra. I just have lots of personal things, and that's why yeah. I like her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. now that we all got that out of our system, back, back to, to the, the favorites. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> back to the good things. Yay. Okay, so. What is our favorite character or lore or event or any of the thing that the series gave us? Mine is Lance. It is yeah. 100% Lance. And like literally as much as I love Dark Prince Eugene, as much as I love Edmund and Hamuel and all that stuff, if they had changed everything else about the series, I would want them to keep Lance. Because like Fair. before we even conceived of this idea that... Eugene might actually, I mean, I can't say before we conceived of the idea that Eugene might actually be nobility because we've conceived of that since we all learned what Eugene meant way back nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but, before, oh, it also fits Herbert. But also, so <laughs> before all, so when we learned what Eugene's name meant, it was a fandom thing that he might actually be secret nobility. And yeah. I feel like Dark Prince Eugene was an homage to that fandom theory. So that was oh, kind of yeah. great. But, um, but with Lance, it's like I had always wanted to know that Eugene had not actually been alone alone since mm-hmm. he left the orphanage. I'm like, no, please let him have had a friend at least. Let him have had somebody who actually did like him. Even though, like, you know, the way that he put it, that Rapunzel was the first person to like Eugene Fitzherbert more than Le- more than Flynn Rider. Like, I agree that Lance probably liked Flynn Rider better, at least, oh, you know, yeah. growing up and all of the yeah. escapades and all that stuff. He liked Flynn better than Eugene because Eugene was, like, sentimental and, you know ruined the, the 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 hunt and all that kind of fun stuff and so like he thought Flynn was more fun mm-hmm. but at least Eugene had a friend and that's yeah. what I really had always wanted was to know that Eugene had had a friend and so I wouldn't trade Lance for anything Lance is yeah that Lance is it for me um by me saying Eugene's backstory I'm not just saying Dark Prince Eugene I'm saying everything so including Lance mm-hmm. that gave us Eugene information because oh, yeah. okay. he didn't give us any information in the movie. He yeah. was like, ah, no, you don't want to hear that. It's sad. And I'm like, tell me, you stupid idiot. I <laughs> everything about you. So, eh, yeah, every piece of knowledge we got to learn about Eugene before the movie is that that's my favorite thing mm-hmm. because okay. that's the stuff I always wanted to know. Like I had a whole list of things that I was like, I want to know this about him and that about him. And I got to learn pretty much everything except his mom's name. Um, and like, you know, his actual time in the orphanage would have been nice to see or hear more about, but you know, we got to learn enough that I feel satisfied. So yeah, I got to say that all the Eugene backstory, mm-hmm. that's okay. my favorite. Good, 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 yeah. good. I yeah. like I like those too. It's hard. <laughs> I was just gonna say I really like that Eugene's the captain now, but you guys were way more sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> I like I that was super unexpected, and I really I like it. I like that it kind of gave him like a thing. He's not just the her I, boyfriend, you know. I like I that. That means that he let the stabs out at their wedding. Oh, yeah. Eugene, you sentimental That's, fool. You know what? That, <laughs> that is the first time I had heard it expressed that way, and you're absolutely right. He's the captain of the guard. He let them come to the wedding. Yeah. yeah. He was, hey, you guys want to come to my wedding? And they're, because <laughs> he calls them practically family in Return yeah. of the King. Because yeah. he's like, I actually have more history with you two than I do with my own father. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I like that. I like that. That's good. That's good. So, That's good. I just, you know, I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, yeah. He oh, invited and the staff thing, to the wedding. That's really cute. One thing that I like about him being captain of the guard is that it's hot. we had. Well, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, he was the captain <laughs> thing is pretty hot. The uniform is not so much. Yeah. But, no. I mean, honestly, the big thing about it for me is that. Uh, 
I, for a long time, have theorized that he would, you know, we all, you know, the Phantom had the whole thing about what if he becomes a guard. Yeah. And I'd always theorized that he would have to at least be knighted to be, quote, um, like, quote, unquote, worthy of marrying a princess. Like, yeah. he'd have to have some sort of a title. And, yeah. like, this is basically as close to being knighted mm-hmm. as you can be, you know, in a series that doesn't have knights. Mm-hmm. Well, doesn't have knights in that particular kingdom. So, like, yeah, I mean, this basically made the thing that I wanted to be come true happen Mm -hmm. so it was great and then there was that one fan art i can't remember drew it i can't remember who drew it but then there's that person who dressed up his captain's uniform by putting his white sash on it and (laughs) perfect 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 the idea that he would start wearing that sash all the time is just like yeah so yeah and it was also very satisfying that the captain was the ex-captain was the one that picked him and the reason that that he picked him like that was that that was awesome yeah that was awesome. Like, honestly, when we're like, he's gonna, Eugene's gonna be the captain, like, oh, so Rapunzel's just gonna, like, make Eugene arbitrarily yeah. the captain? And like, no, the captain picked Eugene. And, and like, people oh, that, are all mad that, about it. And you're like, boom! And, like, that changes everything for me. Yep. Like, yeah. I was, like, iffy when I learned he was gonna be the captain. I'm like, why would Eugene be the captain? And it's like, they're just gonna give Eugene, who doesn't really want the job. Oh! Oh, the captain of the guard said he's the most suited for it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. And everyone was like, Cass is going to be so mad. And then Cass did not give a damn. And I was like, yes. <laughs> like I said, I totally called that. Cass is not going to kill the captain of the guard. It was like, so good. That's one thing I'm still sad that I never got was was Eugene rubbing it in Cap's face. That yes. he was, I'm right. sure it happened off screen. Oh, it happened. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just so sad. Uh, we have to write a pic about that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Things got to happen. All right, so favorite song. I'll let you guys go first, even though I'm pretty sure we all agree. No, I know what Kelsey's is, but anyway, I'm pretty sure everyone <laughs> agrees. Yeah, mine. <laughs> I want to hear, hear Kelsey's first. Well, I think I know what you guys are going to say, and that's probably my second. But my first is Set Yourself Free just because it's on my arm. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And Claire designed my tattoo for me. I love that song. Yeah. It's so, mm, I love it. But I think my second is what you guys are about to say. Yep, everything yeah. I ever Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. The song I waited eight goddamn years for. <laughs> I guess it's eight and a half, technically, but yeah. So good. I, I mean, oh, yeah, Eugene. like, we wanted a Eugene solo for, like, ever. Actually, we wanted a Eugene solo sung by Zachary Levi forever. Yes. Just, forever. hey, technically, Wanted Man isn't a solo. It's a, it's a, he's the lead, but he's got a lot of backup, so mm-hmm. it's not a solo. So, yeah, yeah everything and, I ever thought I did was the only Eugene solo. And Eugene, um, or Zach was too busy being in Thor the Dark World to be in Gallivant, so we didn't get to hear him sing yes! solo songs all the time. Anyways, oh like, it makes me sad amazing. forever. But that would have been well, amazing, especially the, considering that Faradol got, like, such bad treatment in, like, Thor, or I should say in Avengers in general. Like, ugh. No, he should have been in Galavan. The best like part so of that better. song is when we heard it before the episode aired, and we were like, oh low-key, like, Rapunzel, what did you <laughs> no, do to him? We're like, who I hurt you? And we're like, you hurt you, you dummy. He <laughs> also made me go from, I'm 100% co- convinced that he's Dark Prince Eugene, to I'm 0% convinced. <laughs> I think something I else is so going funny, on. Really. I thought it was so funny, Ellie, that, like, that was a thing that completely convinced you that you must be wrong. And I was like, no, this confirms it even stronger for me. This is like, yeah, exactly. different person. Because I listened to it, and it made me go, I am so right, I can't even believe it. And then, like, a couple days passed, and I was like, I'm not right, am I? Because other people started being like, this is what it means. Or, like, that's what it means. And I'm like, you're probably right. That makes more sense. I guess I'm a failure. That was the one thing that, like, cemented it for me. Because before I was like, "Mm, maybe. And I'm like, yeah, there he is. (laughs) Because for me, that was, like, that was literally what it actually is. Really, like, he talks about his past. He talks about his present, and he talks yeah. about how his present is a lie because his past was a lie. So now that the future is uncertain. I'm like, oh my god, I just found out he's the prince. Oh my god. So like, Wait, it's a babe, yeah. but this whole life is a lie. <laughs> I, don't think it's I don't know if you ladies saw, but like on Instagram, he like sang his verse of I've got a dream, and he remembered the lyrics this time. Good for him. Oh, good for him. So him. <laughs> but the best part is that he actually did the, he did, actually did the, no, really. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I really do love his. I, I really do love when he messes that up. Oh my! He's so, uh, ra- they're rather oh, by a 
Yes. Your smile's funny. Yes, surrounded by a million. <laughs> See, this is why I don't sing this song because I can't remember the words. <laughs> a million, uh, enormous, enormous smile. <laughs> oh my gosh. Funny. It's so cute. So cute. I love it so Such much. It's so great. But hey, he got the lyrics right. And there's a the best part is that because he is filming himself singing it, you have a moment where you can see him going, "Is this? Are these the right lyrics?" Like he's grabbing it. <laughs> he knows the Tangled fans will eviscerate him if he doesn't <laughs> sing it right. So, right, right. Okay. So, what is your favorite series specific merch? Mine has to be the comic books. Yeah. Mm. Because the comic books gave us more character stuff in general, and then also. Going back to talking about how in season two, Zontiri was my favorite villain. I remember the comics kept like mentioning Zontiri and dropping Zontiri. Mm -hmm. like, I know that the comics aren't canon, but it keeps talking about Zontiri and he's going to be such a big deal. And then he, uh. <laughs> <laughs> This is a tough one. I Would the magazines count? The magazines before they got murdered? Right. That's, that would probably be mine. Those were really cool because I really like the interviews they did. Yeah, those were really cool. Yeah. And then they were like, ha ha ha, taking that away from me too. <laughs> Here, here's a princess magazine. I was like, I don't want this. <laughs> exactly. I took the new dream sticker. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, I think it honestly is probably all of the new Eugene dolls I got. <laughs> Yeah. Because I got I got I got plushy Eugene, which I he was with me through all of the Dark Prince Eugene stuff. And and then I got him in that hilarious green outfit that he wears and his fluffy <laughs> winter coat. And yeah. And adventure Eugene, of course. My Simpson that I take with me everywhere. And then also tying for that because it's not official merchandise is my two Hamuels. And my Dark Prince Eugene blanket. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff she loves! Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, you know what, I Ellie? Things. I made you know that what, blanket Ellie? during a podcast. I <laughs> we were recording and I was making <laughs> it on my phone. That. You're such a goober. <laughs> I don't know, Ellie. I might have to take my thing back. It might not be the comics. It might be our pins. Oh, oh, yes. That's a good one. Okay, you know what? In fact, I take it back in general. The fan-made merch is my favorite merch. Yes. Yeah. It just it straight up is. Because it's like, I do like what we got when we were still getting merchandise. But the fans have been so creative and giving us, like, character merch that, like, mm -hmm. doesn't exist anywhere else. And, yeah. like, feeding all need for things since I, the company stopped giving it to us. I and do all that love kind of all of my Dark Prince Eugene fan art that I've bought. Yeah. Yes. Which is great, which I have in a, I have some of it in a frame now, not all of it, sadly, <laughs> but because there's a lot, <laughs> which is amazing. Oh, you know what I like? I like my autographed Moon Sandra picture. <laughs> I yes! always forget I have that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I yes. was going through all the stuff and I was like, oh my god, I forgot I had this. <laughs> <laughs> I took all yeah, my stuff I down because I have to I move it and I, for I, I miss it. I miss looking at it. <laughs> Okay, so favorite fandom memories. Like, okay, honestly, the hiatus madness of the last hiatus mm -hmm. was pretty damn funny. Like, that's when we discovered that ripoff fairy tales and bedtime story series that was so, like, <laughs> Prince oh, Ronald right. for like two weeks. And, like, that's when we had, let's turn everybody into a moon version. <laughs> and that's when, like, I ask, that's when Kelsey asked me about the chair and I answered it. <laughs> Everybody started asking me about what kind of chair would XYZ character be. Yeah, that was funny. I mean, honestly, that was genuinely funny. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I liked the very beginning when we like got the very first not the not the teaser for like the the for Tangled Forever After mm -hmm. when we got the first for the series. And we were like, look at the first appearance ever of Varian! And like, oh my god, what is on that? Like, oh, what? and Eugene was like looking at the, the job board and we were like taking really bad uh, mm -hmm. screen caps of it and trying to figure out what jobs he was applying for. And like, oh, we've come so far. Like, like, <laughs> Phantom Madness back in the beginning was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was so great. I loved it so much. <laughs> I will hold a special place in my heart always 
for the last couple of days before the finale when mm -hmm. the fandom all of a sudden got really nice to each other and we were just doing all of the positivity and like everyone is being so sweethearts and talking about how much we love each other mm -hmm. and yada 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 and like you know all differences aside we love this fandom yada yada and that was that was great mm -hmm. that's like so, yeah. I think mine I have two my first one was the week leading up to Cassandra's Revenge because everybody was freaking insane. Like, I feel like the excitement for that episode was bigger than the finale was. And that was just a really fun time. And then I think my other favorite <laughs> was when Varian said he act he felt like a bird. And then everybody and their mom was like, Kelsey! <laughs> and I was like, yes! <laughs> I felt so loved. <laughs> when bird Varian became canon. That was great. <laughs> but I just, I like, uh, I like those. Like when everybody yeah. comes together, that's and when everybody's just yeah. insane. Yeah, my mine's not surprising at all. It's of course, <laughs> people rallying behind me and my crazy crack theory that turned out to be true. Because <laughs> it would just it. I don't know. I just felt very validated, um, and that's you know. I, we all crave validation, but I've mm -hmm. I've had a hard time with it in the past. So I've I've come up with theories about Tangled before and been very wrong. <laughs> so it felt really cool to have other people think I was right and then to end up being right. Mm -hmm. And I just it it was such a win for everyone. Like people were congratulating me, and I'm like, no, but you guys should be congratulating yourselves because. Mm -hmm. You also thought it was right, and you drew fan art, and you wrote things, and, like, you contributed to the theory. It wasn't just me. It was all of us who believed in it, and mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. It was great. A funny thing about this is it reminds me of what made me join Tumblr in the first place, and it was because I was looking up Tangled stuff. I mean, unsurprising. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing observations about the movie that showed that the writing and visuals in the movie were a lot deeper than I thought that they were, mm -hmm. which is actually what like dragged me into loving Tangled in the first place. And I joined Tumblr because I was like, I want to be one of those smart people who notices things like that. Yeah. And so you noticing that Edmund has Eugene's eyes and then mm -hmm. being right about that, it was mm -hmm. like, no, that's what that feels like. It's sort of like I've got that yeah. one coastline that has like, I don't even know how many, you know, dozens of thousands of, of notes on it about um, about Rapunzel and being trained to only touch people when she's got permission to. Yeah. And, you know, to, and to not seek out physical comfort when she wants it. And so that's why, you know, Eugene taking your hand is such a big deal in the boat. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that's one of those observations where it's like, oh, that still circulates. Every now and then that's still my top post for a couple days. Mm -hmm. And it's just like... Yeah. So yeah, so like you talking about the validation, I'm like, oh yeah, I get that validation because it's like mm -hmm. that's why I got into the fandom in the first place is because I'm like I can I I could I could contribute to this, and yeah. so yeah, absolutely no, that was amazing. Yeah. Like honestly, uh, when it when you turned out to be right and like Kelsey and I are just bawling watching mm -hmm. the episode, and being like she's right, I can't believe she's right. well, <laughs> like we were sure you were right anyway, but it was so great to see that you were actually yeah. right was going to be spelled out for us and we got baby Eugene and oh god oh, mm -hmm. he's so little my little boy my wow, little so, baby he's so great <laughs> yep okay and now we've so... seen both baby Rapunzel and Eugene so we can formulate what their kids will look like <laughs> <laughs> they both have button noses they both uh, got little... the button noses it's <laughs> little buttons Okay, so um, favorite theory that didn't come true. Not like <laughs> you're glad it didn't come true, but like you loved this theory and it's too bad that it didn't come true. Yep. Um, I think my favorite one that didn't come true. Um, you know what? Honestly, it might have been Dark Princess Cassandra. Like, mm -hmm. I love being the dark prince and i love that that's canon but mm -hmm. there was a lot of really validity behind cassandra being the oh princess yeah of, you know i liked that that was like oh yeah if it goes that way i won't be upset at all and, then and i'm like, glad i'm glad that we had solidarity between yeah. the, the two mm -hmm. of us like yeah. and there were even people who were like maybe they're siblings and they're both the dark you mm -hmm. know the dark rulers and i'm like it, yes that could work got that already got that sibling dynamic what if they're actually siblings you know so Honestly, yeah i would have preferred that <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's not the 
Yeah, me too. If we have to know who Cassandra's parents were, why did it have to be Gothel? Mm-hmm. That makes no sense, and it was terrible. It was terrible. Would have rather it had been Edmund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have one, Kelsey? I don't know. Because Bird Varian was half true. And I really... <laughs> I mean, nothing is coming to mind. There was nothing that I was, like, rallying behind that didn't happen. I don't know. So, eh, meh. I, cu- I could have gotten behind know. Dark Princess Cassandra. I did like that. I think it could have yeah. worked a lot better than what her yeah. story is now, but... Yeah. I definitely agree with that one. And I don't know if the one I'm thinking of is really technically a theory, uh, but Bastion. Of yeah. course it's Bastion. It's always yeah. Bastion. Yeah. Yeah. It's technically, it, it could be considered a theory because once we learned Xavier was coming, I was like, yeah. well, we could get Bastion! Yeah, the vague theory that we had was just, okay, vague theory that Bastion's gonna be in the series yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Either and they'll use I his character design, they'll drop little, his name, yeah. yeah. I developed it a little more once we figured out what Flynn Poster was about. Or even yeah. actually, I think after we got the title for Flynn Poster, I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretending to be Flynn? Hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder, could, that be Bastion? could it be Bastion? Is it Bastion? Is it my boy? Is it my beautiful baby boy? No, <laughs> no it is not. It is the worst. <laughs> okay. So, least favorite theory that did come true. You all know what mine is. I think we're in a I bet we all story. share this. <laughs> yeah. share this. <laughs> Gothel being Cass's mom is the worst yep. thing ever. It's just the worst. I honestly the- still, I'm still angry. I mean, I knew, I know he had to do it because NDAs and those things. But Chris th- trying to throw us off the trail yeah. at Detroit Expo only for it to come true was yeah. just like, Especially because that was something you used, uh, you know, when people were I like, used that as evidence that it wasn't true. And you yes. were like, no, 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 because Chris said at 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 the it's at the panel that it wasn't if gonna happen. Was mom, you said Chris said that none of us knew who you know where you know what her where her story's going. But like, so it, it felt uh, like it was teeth. <laughs> it was like, yeah, yeah no. Oh, God. Uh, of all of the reasons we all could have thought of as to why Cassandra took the Moonstone, the worst was what actually happened. Yeah. Like, th- I think that was also the hard thing. It's like, we all had such great ideas. Like, because, yeah. you know, we instantly started formulating. We were like, why did she take the Moonstone? What, is- what did she see behind that door? What did she see in that room? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like how a lot of us were like, oh, she's been possessed this whole time. That's not actually Cassandra. Um, that was a good theory. Yeah. Um, um, in fact, that might now be my favorite theory that didn't come true is that Cass was possessed because, like, that would have made more sense. Oh, yeah. If, uh, if it had been Zontiri in disguise, that yeah, would have made a lot of sense. Really sad. That would have made a lot of sense. Just like, oh, God, so many. Oh, God. It was- Gothel being her mother is the worst. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. It's it's still, it still doesn't make any sense. Nope. Why would Gothel any... carry baby to term? I was hoping we would Do get that. at least some sort of inkling to all of that, but we didn't. Why? Like there was nothing. Why? Yeah. Why? Why she decided to carry a baby to full term, right? even though she's a vain bitch <laughs> who yeah. wouldn't have let herself become pregnant, right? <laughs> or at least carry a baby for that and as soon as she found out she was pregnant she'd be like well i'm gonna let myself get past yeah, child like, right? one day i guess i'll just have to stay indoors for an extra week and then make a run to the flower in the middle of the night but <laughs> i'm not carrying this baby yep because oh gonna, i don't get it just, I mean, it's a complete like i'm like you completely misunderstood gothel's character yeah i'm yeah. like did you watch the movie and just fall asleep during all the gothel parts Mm-hmm. Or yeah, because yeah. even in the series, they have her being stupid vain. Yeah, but how would she carry a baby? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. She wouldn't do it, people. She, she wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Do it. <laughs> she just wouldn't, and I don't understand. I mean, and if I'm they so- had, if the if the explanation had not been that Cath- that Cass was her biological daughter, but that she had also kidnapped Cassandra because she wanted a servant, I'm that like. Would've... That is so marginally sad. better, you know? It's marginally better, and then it also takes away all of Cassandra's thing about, like, she was my real mother. Yeah, yeah. and uh. then 
she and Rapunzel would have had a, a real reason to be, you know, like connected. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's because, oh, we were both taken and we were both, you know, we were, we were both, both taken and used in a finest woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, not just, uh, but she's my mommy and she might have loved me. I don't know. But, no, see, I, you know what? One of the worst parts is to me is I understand that like psychological trauma does not make sense. Like yeah. you can you like like how you react to trauma does not necessarily have any logic behind it. Yeah. But I hate that the way Cass was acting seemed to aim towards she somehow thought that she would be able to earn a dead woman's love post mortem. Mm-hmm. Like, it made no sense. None. And also just completely invalidating Rapunzel's trauma because yeah. she's like, but she chose you over me. And Rapunzel's like, she kept me locked away in a tower for 18 years and was terrible to me my whole life. How is that? How did she? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Yep. Stop yeah. it. There's uh-huh. a crow in the tree outside my window. <gasps> oh. It's reporting back. Emmy says, Emma. what's up? <laughs> Every time, literally, so, like, sometimes I go out, I see crows, but usually they're just, like, quiet around me. Uh, Every time I have gone out since the whole, uh, like, shutdown has started, um, crows will just caw at me until I get home. (laughs) They're like, why are you outside? And I'm like, just tell Edmund that I'm fine. And they're like, no! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I do that every time like I'm at Disneyland and like well obviously it's been a long time since that's happened um, every time I'm at Disneyland and like the crows start to gather at dusk I'm always like they're reporting back to Edmund ah you gotta like, tell Edmund the it's Herberty secrets it's Herberty secrets we saw that one that almost fell out of the tree when we were waiting for oh the Matterhorn God. before the finale and I was like there he is what's yes. up Hemi boy <laughs> oh, that's great that's awesome that one Okay, so um, favorite AU. Mine is either Moon Jean, which mm. I super duper love and also makes more sense than Cassandra being Gothel's daughter. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I like the whole premise behind that one being that like he did it to re- protect Rapunzel. Like, first, and also he, sh- he thought it was his duty because he's the Dark Prince mm-hmm. and yeah. he's supposed like, to protect people from the Moonstone. Yeah, exactly. It's so it's like, it's not that he didn't trust her, it's not that he didn't have faith in her, but that he like lost his nerve and he just yeah. could not bear the thought of her dying. So that makes so much more sense. So I really like that one. And he I had been listening another- to Adira and heard, you know, heard Adira being like, uh, she could go boom. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, uh, I- <sighs> see her go boom no thank you (laughs) um and i had another one and now i can't think of what it is but moon jean might be my favorite um my favorite was one that i heard of i heard of one time and it was everything the same but instead of edmund it was eugene's mom and that Edmund yes. was the one that died. Yes. And I really like that. I think that'd be I awesome. Like that too. That's a good one. If, we, if his mom was totally eccentric and Not... weird and had yeah. one arm. Yeah. And yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, basically just gender swap Edmund. Yeah. <laughs> Make him look like how Fitz's mom looks, but have, you know. Yep. But like actually Act have a the mom same. have a presence in the series. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think my favorite are those two, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. Those are some fun theories that people have come up with. Yeah. And like, sorry, Moon G- or, or Moon Varian fans, none of us care about Moon Varian. I, like, I've, I've never really hated Moon Varian well, or anything. I mean, I, I always thought it was fun. I always thought it was a fun theory, and I liked the Comet variant theory, too. That was fun. (laughs) See, okay, that might be one of the theories that I'm really disappointed didn't come true. Yeah. Is the Comet being a thing. Like, it really looked like there was going to be a third aspect to this whole celestial thing, and then it wasn't a thing. So, yeah. Yeah. um, that, That, that... that irritates me that that never came true. But the fun part is, is that all of our theories can now be AUs and we can all write stories and draw fan arts where it's true. And so that's the fun part of fandom is that the whole thing is out. It can't contradict us. Whatever we say goes. Yay, yep. fandom. <laughs> Woo, rah, rah. Woo. Okay. So favorite guest or guest that we've had on Tangled Talk. This is a tough one because like Eden is the shining star of guests that we have had on Tangled Talk. 
Um, I really, really loved the one where we had Ricky and Tom at the same time. That was a lot of fun. Also, part of that one, it's like I honestly felt like we were kind of reuniting them. I feel like they probably haven't talked much since they stopped working on the series. So I was like, yay, they got to be friends and talk to each other for the Mm -hmm. first time in a while. And then also I was thinking today earlier about way back at the beginning of Tangle Talk when we actually had fans as guest stars. Mm -hmm. And I remember Mm -hmm. like Beth and me and Meg, those were really fun episodes. Those were all very good. So yeah, it's it's I can't pick an absolute favorite, but like yeah, either bottom of the barrel or top of the food chain is probably where it goes, you know. Yeah, I think it's definitely got to be Ricky and Tom and Ricky and Tom together for me. Yes. <laughs> that was great. Those, those two are such hooligans. They oh my are. god, they're and so I mean, goofy. I will always have in my mental portfolio that I like punned at them and got the reaction simultaneously <laughs> in real time and that was fantastic. Oh, that was good. And just Ricky's reaction to them is that's what it's like to hear one of my jokes. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> oh, I think man. it's it's hard for me to pick because everyone we've had have had some like really good moments. Like Eden was yeah. awesome. The fans were yeah. awesome. Having Ricky and Tom on together when they made up the Fidella stuff was freaking hilarious. But then I really liked the first time we had Ricky on because after we recorded, we all sat on Skype for like four hours and we argued about Twilight. Like it was great. (laughs) And then we had Chris on and that was fun to be able to have, you know, fans get their questions answered and they had no idea why they were asking those questions. Yeah. So we just... anybody anything what would you yeah. ask them and they're like by the way chris here's the questions from the fandom it's hard for so me to pick a favorite thing. because every single guest that we've had has been like awesome we've had awesome moments yeah, yeah. with them i mean we have like an amber yes yeah Kate, Wendy, and Tampa, those were all really really great so like i'm like i honestly uh feel like blessed to mm-hmm have this sort of presence in the fandom that like we could actually get people on our show who worked Mm -hmm. on the show who were big fans of the show um yeah so it's been um this kind of like segues into this this bit that we've actually had planned for quite a while guys that's (laughs) like uh, this is our time to gush over you um you guys who have been listening to us, whether it's been like only recently started picking us up or if you've been with us from the beginning or if you discovered us sometime in the middle or whatever, we've had such huge experiences hearing from the fans. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got Kelsey who runs our Twitter and so she gets all of the comments on Twitter. It's so and fun. You've got, <laughs> and you've got like the people who like send me asks on Tumblr about the about the podcast. Um, honestly, every single person who's ever suggested anything, whether we use your suggestion or not, we appreciate that you want to contribute because mm-hmm. Tangle Talk has always been about the community and about all of us having the conversation. So yeah. like, even though the three of us are sitting here talking about it, we the reason why we reference so many things that we see online is because you guys are part of the conversation. And we've had some really big things like we've have we have listeners who um are hard of seeing and they like the way that we describe the episodes because then they actually know what's going on mm-hmm. and that's like oh my gosh actually helped people enjoy the series more because mm-hmm. they now because they listen to our podcast mm-hmm. or we've had lots of people and this gets us every single time <laughs> um people who feel alone in the Tangled fandom because they've got nobody around them physically that they can share this with. And so they listen to the podcast and now they feel like they've got friends they can talk to. And that's like, holy crap. Like Mm -hmm. that's hugely impactful. That's enormous. That was the biggest thing for me because I totally see, like I totally understand that because that's how I felt for the longest time. I mean, Kelsey was my first friend in the Tangled fandom Mm -hmm. and really the first person I got to talk to Tangled about who wasn't just like "Uh Mm uh-huh or okay I kind of get that like she got me you get me (laughs) (laughs) and then I met Becky and and she also got me so it like you know I totally understand where people are coming from like I don't have anyone to talk to about Tangled and I felt really nice to hear that um, you know, people felt like they, you know, people are part of the conversation, but they felt like they were there with us, mm-hmm. you know, 
discussing the things and um yeah i don't know it's just it's really nice it makes me happy mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes honestly, my heart go dokey dokey honestly that's part of what i love about our format about how like we're not professional at all and mm-hmm. it shows but i like that because i feel like it's more personal because yeah. we're not professional so it's like you guys don't feel like we're lecturing to you. You just feel yeah. like we're having a conversation mm-hmm. with you. It's like we're all on the phone together and you might not have anything to say specifically, but you get to hear the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so another thing that it's like, there have been people who have told us that they like listen to the podcast on their morning commute. And I'm like, so I'm so I'm on someone's radio in the car while it's they're like- It's weird. That's, that's so <laughs> yeah. weird to me. So I'm like, weird. you wanna I'm... listen to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's like I, was, I, I recently pointed out on Tumblr how uh, one of the things Tangled has done for me is it's actually given me minor celebrity dumb. And it's like, it's a niche market and it's a very, very minor celebrity thing. But like, the day I found out that people listened to me in the car was the day I realized that I'm genuinely a minor celebrity. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, people go I mean, out of their way to listen to what I have to say. And I'm like, what? I'm just. Uh, what you my, know my co-workers always joke about like wanting to start a podcast of their own and I'm like oh I have a podcast and they're like you do and I'm like yeah and they're like how many people listen and I'm like well going off the YouTube views like anywhere between like 500 and like 1500 and mm-hmm. they're like what <laughs> I'm like yeah it's a lot of people Let me and go that's see only what our on followers YouTube. are at but yeah, it's just, it's kind of crazy. Yep. 495 it's, subscribers on YouTube. And I think we're at 600 nice. something on Twitter. Woo! Yeah. It's crazy. And we have no way of tracking that on, on, and we're on Spotify and we've got no way of tracking Spotify. Yeah, because that Spotify sucks. That way. It's stupid. But, um, and then it's like, um, like my mom will see things like, my mom will say things like, I'm sorry I don't listen to your podcast, but like, I don't know how to listen to a podcast. I'm like, that's okay, mom. I don't particularly want you listening to the podcast because not only will you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> I don't want really want her listening to me thirsting over Eugene. Like, really? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me be honest with you guys. I don't yeah. want my mom hearing this stuff I say about this guy, this cartoon character. Like, I'm almost 40. Like, in a little over a month, I'll be 40. And I'm just like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. My mom I've doesn't been, get to hear that. I've been thirsting over Eugene since I was 13. My parents are well aware. <laughs> My husband listens to the podcast <laughs> Honestly, and okay, thirsting I over say, him. I, For a while, I didn't have anyone to talk to, so it was just my parents. And they I got would say, the Ellie, when I visited you, the fact that they know every little thing about me was surprising. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I don't share everything. I just I know, don't have like, people to talk to often. No, I mean, so. and like, I get that, and it's fine. And it's like, actually, I will say that, like, watching you interact with your parents, I'm like, wow, that is an admirable relationship that you can literally talk to them about anything. And whether yeah. they get it or not, they're still, like, respectful and listen. Yeah. And, like, that's cool. You have a great relationship with your parents. I do. They're the best. <laughs> <laughs> they're super awesome. They are. But, yeah, so... Uh, all things considered, guys, we know that, like, yes, we always talk about how, you know, we have the podcast whether or not we had listeners, but having the listeners is hugely mm-hmm. impactful. Yeah. So, like, we do this for you also. It's not just for us. Um, and we're glad for everybody that we've been able to help and entertain over the years because, dang, we've actually been doing this for over a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, it's going to be June? June 1st was our yeah, first podcast? Because I, so. I remember hitting the anniversary yeah. last year. So, um, so yeah, so uh, we're actually when like... The, when the Dark Prince Eugene theory was in its infancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Baby theory. Yeah. Oh. Baby theory. But yeah, I so... think I even mentioned it in that episode. I'm like, <laughs> oh. I think you do, and I'm like, I don't like that theory. I don't want Eugene to be a prince. <laughs> <laughs> I remember warming up to the theory. I remember being like, you know, it has merit. I'm not sure I want Eugene to be a prince, but like, that has merit, and I'm definitely going to support one of my best friends in her theory. Mm-hmm. And then the farther along it got, I'm like, she's so, this seems so accurate. It We're seems like, so correct. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, first podcast nearly two years ago you guys that's, that's crazy insane. yeah that is crazy and so and it's like we're so glad that we've been able to entertain you guys and like help people and you know just kind of be doorways to the fandom for other people mm-hmm. and like it's it's humbling it really is like 
We didn't expect, we're like, let's start a podcast about Tangled and we'll get maybe 50 listeners. You know, yeah. that's absolutely where my mind was. I did not expect that we were actually going to get any sort of a following mm -hmm. or people like making requests or suggestions on topics we could cover and whatnot. And even though this is the last one until November, because we are definitely not going to beat a dead horse. Um, <laughs> unless like, something happens unless in something between happens. now and November, which is, you never know. You know, and you know, somebody had suggested that maybe we ought to do a podcast about the live action one. And I said, I don't even know if I want to see the live action one. But you know, once it's out on Disney Plus, I'll watch it for free and we can do a I podcast. I think it would be hilarious if we did a hate watch podcast of it. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm game. I'm game. Look forward to that in the future, guys. We'll do a hate, a hate watch podcast of the Rapunzel live action movie. I think the best would be if we watch it for the first time all together yes. and we, like, we we record it so like not you know not just our voices but voice. yeah <laughs> so yes. you can see the anger in our faces <laughs> okay no i'm done with rage. that so yeah all in all guys i mean if you've reached it all the way to the end uh we just we want to thank you honestly for sticking with us for listening to this for re-listening to episodes of the podcast um and not just for our our guest stars because i know that the guest star episodes have more hits than any of the other ones which means they've been listened to more often mm -hmm. but um yes yeah, so thanks for being with us this entire time it's been great and we've loved doing this for and with you um so yeah that's about wraps up this particular one wow we actually went a lot longer than i think I this we is our longest to. podcast <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us for this entire time. And we know you've heard all of this before, but be safe. Stay at home if you at all can. Yes. Get fresh air and sunshine when you can. The sunshine will give you vitamin D and will help to battle depression, like while you're cooped up indoors. And for goodness sakes, wash your damn hands. Yes. Just do it. Like, like, just do it. This is like a quarantine podcast. We're asking <laughs> you to take care of those guys. Um, and we love you very much. Very, very much, and thanks for listening to us for all this time, and now we have two planned podcasts for the future, so we will talk to you <laughs> then. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye! Bye!